Hey, what's good, people? This is episode 130. I remembered I didn't have the guest this time. And that's because I got a smart girl on my podcast. That looks like Tony Rodriguez. We're going to find out, okay? The episode starts right now. <laughs> oh, man, what the hell was that? That was really loud. <laughs> <laughs> What up, people? Tony Rodriguez in the house. How you doing? What's good, girl? Good. How are you? Sorry. I rephrase. I got to do this proper. I've got to give the people, give the people what they want. Okay. Now we're ready to dance. Yes. We're ready. <laughs> so, Tony, you just came from practice? I did just come from practice. Um, a little uh, 9.30 to 11.30 with... Uh, Emily Stockman against uh, Therese and Sarah Sponsel. Okay. So yeah. Is that who Sarah's playing with, Therese? Yeah. It's a good team. It's a good team. Really good team. They have a lot of experience. And um, I think Therese really stepped up at the end of this past season and proved herself, worked hard, and mm -hmm. now she gets to play with Sarah, and that's legit. So I'm happy for her. Yeah. Well, on my side, I got I'm, I got to highlight Kelly Reeves on that too, though. I mean, Kelly Reeves – since her and Allie McCulloch, since 2016, she's mm -hmm. done okay. And then next thing you know, like whoever she plays with is, right? And you and me, we've been we've been traveling around AVP America. So it wasn't just the tour. So we we, could, we have a bigger sample size that allows us to yeah. to kind of do those things. So you, do, are you still playing with uh, Savvy? Yeah, right now we've been training a lot. We actually just played in the FCA uh, Challenger that Heather Fryson put on um, down in El Porto. Um, off Rosecrans, and um, it was a really good, uh, like, preseason tournament. Um, you know, we got to get some touches, kind of see where we're at, what we need to work on. Ended up uh, playing uh, Urango and Carly Scott in the finals, and um, it, was a, it was a good match. We won the first set, lost the second. We made a couple errors on our side. It also was windy welcome um ah, and uh <laughs> we pushed to a third and um we actually were down um six ten and okay third set yeah third yeah. set down six ten that's usually a wrap <laughs> yeah yeah it's usually, usually like okay i'm just gonna roll over and just you know be done but uh we actually called a timeout six ten and um we were like okay like we can do this let's let's get it done like we need to go on a serving run it's kind of basically what we did. We Savvy was serving. She threw a couple short, got him out of system, and then we tied it back up 10-10 and then pushed to the end. So it was actually really exciting to feel the fight, right? Because yeah. when you're in off season for so long, you kind of almost forget what competing's like. And to be able to kind of just push through that immediately um, in the first tournament back of the season, not really – First tournament, but first tournament, hypothetically, you know? Okay, yeah. Um, so I thought it was good. I mean, we played well. Um, I love playing with Savvy. I think we have good chemistry. I think we know we want to play with each other. Um, I think it's a matter of the AVP giving us just a little bit more info on what qualifiers are going to look like or if there's going to be qualifiers for the for the pro events. Um, I've also been been training a little bit with Zana. Um, Luna, she's, yeah. yeah, she's great, too. Um, and then I'm – I'm Emily Stockman's practice player on like Thursday, Fridays ish. So, um, and who's she playing with again? Uh, I'm I'm not too sure. Me neither. Um, <laughs> from what I my understanding is, um, she's playing with Lauren Fendrick um, for the first okay. couple of FIVBs, I believe, yeah. and then um, playing with Meg Craft after nice. um, she gets out of college. So, um, but. You know, everything can change. Right. I don't think anything is set in stone um, as much as we always want it to be. Uh, I think, well, good partnerships I think, are. Yeah, but I think things can change um, leading up to leading up to the AVP season. I mean, you just never know. So. Well, that's. I think that's what I was alluding to. There are there are some things that are set in stone, and what, the things that mm -hmm. are set in stone, to, in my opinion, are are, are good partnerships, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Ross and Kleiman, they they you're not they got better playing together. 
Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, Kleinman was a great find and, and she acclimated to the beach really, really well. She's got yeah. good size already. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, she's extremely rangy on that right side. And For really, sure. really, it was just about getting as many reps as she could on the right side. Right. Because Stanford, mm -hmm. she was a left side hitter. Yeah. Two time NCAA uh, final appearances. Lost to lost to my team, my my favorite college team, Penn State. Hey. And Megan Hodge. You know, that was a good that was a good squad, dude. I mean, yeah. I mean, that was just too many weapons, I guess. Right. They went four in a row. So, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. Penn I think State Lace, was, Lacey Fuller was on that team too. But. Yeah, Penn State was owning it for a while. And they were, man. It's Russ Rose, I guess, you know. One of the best. And I think that's said way to the to question I was going to ask. I think you look at someone like Penn State or you look at, from East Coast people, I'll use Springfield as an example. Coach Charlie Sol Sullivan, coach of the national team in 2015. Lacrosse player, never even played. He's just he's just a really good coach. Wow. Um there's a healthy competition in practice mm -hmm. where the environment set up like where the drills are set up like competitive yeah how much does that come into the to play in your practices that help you um i don't know get rid of ring rust or uh, or, or beach rust yeah. when you're when you're playing in scrimmages or actual tournaments yeah i think sometimes it really is hard to kind of uh create an environment that is competition based right or like feels like competition you know because like regardless of what other people say or what what i think i believe that like some people just aren't good practice players like i really i genuinely believe that you got people in <laughs> like the, the club you're coaching that that, that, yeah. that right or yeah. good examples i mean i think that I think everyone has that kind of um, that switch, right? When you're in the actual competition to kind of turn it on, right? So sometimes as the coach, it's hard to create those drills unless your players are really clicking into that zone because it's really hard, right, to get there uh -huh. because you're not actually competing against somebody else. You're competing against people on your team. So it's kind of like, Ooh, usually for indoor, right? For for beach is a little different, right? You're always competing against someone else. But I think for me specifically, I think when I'm really trying to zone in on things I'm working on, sometimes I lose out on that. What is the competition? What am I going to feel in the competition versus, okay, I'm really focusing on my high lines today, right? right. So I'm not necessarily, maybe I'm not necessarily like in my competition mode, like where I flip that switch, right. but like I'm dialed into what I'm working on, so it's a little bit different. Okay, but I think it I think it depends on everyone, honestly. And you you stumbled onto something not stumbled on, but you you um, highlighted something very very interesting. Some people are just really good. They're good. They do really good things in practice, yeah. and there's certain people that do good really good things in a game situation. And, yeah. And there's, I guess there's no real answer in a sense that you never really know until you actually get on the court and play, unless you can examine someone's psychological pattern. All right, they're, yeah. they're, they suck now, but they're gonna be, <laughs> they're gonna be just fine tomorrow. You yeah. Know? Or you see someone taking some really good warm up hits, and it's like, oh my god, we're fucked. <laughs> we're, we're screwed tomorrow, dude. <laughs> we're, we're so, we're so screwed. Why? She yeah. she looks good. I'm like, you don't understand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, so, um, I think it, I think kind of going off of that, I think it's all mentality. It all goes back to the mental, right? So you have people that are really good practice players, but not good at competing, uh -huh. right? Cause mentally they're not put on, you know, they're not put in that competitive environment. Yes. It's still competitive in practice, but you're not in front of a crowd. You're not playing against other people where it matters. Uh -huh. Right. And then there's people that are not good practice players, but they can really turn it on when it's co competition time, right? right? So yeah. I think it's all about mentality, and I think it's good to have a balance. I think it's know? good to have a balance, but I, I think these off-season things are so important, um, especially for young people who um, there are certain players, and I can use indoor as an example, right? Yeah. So there are certain players like they an outside hitter, they get in trouble yeah. a little bit. They get blocked a lot, so yeah. they revert to something that they're comfortable with right. that they in their mind thinks thinks that that works yeah and and if they have the right technique and if their default shot or their plan b or plan c is something that they practice and does work mm -hmm. 
that's good. But if there's some people that fall into this thing, and you know what I'm talking about, because you played indoor, yeah. it's like someone gets blocked. So now they're just going to hit middle of the. I mean, it's the dumbest thing in the world. Hit middle of the court as hard as you can, hope for the best, right? So yeah, right. Yeah. So, so and, and there's a whole bunch of things, bad things that happen, right? First, you get blocked, right? Second of all, if it gets through the block, position six discipline, they stay right there. Yeah. The third thing that happens is no one's going to touch it and it's going to go long, and you're begging the ref for a touch. And we've seen this not with ourselves, because I'm not, I've never been that, maybe not you, but we've seen. Play players yeah for sure fall into this this um mode of uh, what do you call it comfortable inconvenience how's that for an oxymoron yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, um yeah <laughs> and, right. and that's and to me that's the important the important thing about practice it's about good coaching yeah and, and having you have good plan b's and plan c's and that's what it is when when yeah. shit goes wrong when not if not if when when, sh when shit goes wrong when yes so, that's key um, word there i think Go ahead, please. That's one of the best things about working with Scott Davenport. Um, so Sarah and Teresa's coach, Emily yeah. Stockman's coach. So when I go, I yeah. get, I get to experience his trainings, his practice plans, his coaching, everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And so one of the biggest things when I first started out there was, okay, I'm learning new things. I'm not trying to change old things. I'm just trying to learn new things. Right. So arm swing. Let's just say. Let's say first thing is arm swing, okay? So when I go to practice, I'm not trying to win the drill necessarily, I'm trying to win the technique, right? I'm trying to master the technique. I'm not trying to beat anybody on the other side of the net. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to beat the technique. I'm trying to learn the technique to where I know what to do in certain situations, right? right? So I think that's one of the biggest things kind of what you're saying, going off of like what you're comfortable with, right? But in every scenario, you should know what to do. And when you're mastering the technique and practices and you start really dialing it in and understanding how it works, it just comes natural, right? So every situation that you're in, you know, okay, if I get this set and the blocker's there, then okay, I have this, this, this open, right? So it's feel like beach is a little different than indoor, but usually indoor you just get up there and blast the ball right that's kind of what i would probably well, do if yeah. i made a mistake let's say i hit the ball on the block i was the type yeah. of person that yeah, would... do a roll shot in, in a six, <laughs> sixes game good luck with that yeah i i was the type of player um as a younger player who would you know let's say i got blocked i'd basically laugh it off like actually laugh it off like haha you think you can get me again and then obviously i'd probably hit something different or Maybe I hit in the block again. But as I've grown up and like gotten smarter and have realized that it's not all about that, you know, it's, I mean, you kind of have to fill it out. I think you do. And I think at some point when, because look, nobody's going to have a complete game where every shot's their favorite shot. Yeah. We're, we're not machines, we're people. <laughs> so yeah. sooner, at some point, people are going to actually do their job and, and not fill you out. They're, they're going to scout you out and they're going to mm -hmm. be ahead of the game and they're going to play the worst case scenario. Like yeah. if they're blocking you cross and your cut over or your challenge shot is something that they could run down or it's something they think the block is going to touch. They're going to do that to see if you fix that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, shamefully and embarrassingly, I don't see enough of that in, in some of these these qualifiers, and even and, and many many. And this is my bit. I'm, I'm gonna criticize people a little bit, but in many of the main draw games, I don't see a lot of that, and I, I I wish I'd like to see more of that, you know. And that starts with the coach, and it starts with training. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, mm -hmm. just kind of thinking back to my college days, you know, at LSU, we mm -hmm. I say we are known for our high line game. Like mm -hmm. we we I've probably hit like. I don't even know an estimated number of high lines, but we would go to practice and just shoot high lines, like right. in the yeah. five by five. Mm -hmm. Had little PVC pipe corners, put them down, and we shot high lines, boom, 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 mm -hmm. and like repped it out. So I feel like definitely, I mean, I'm pretty comfortable hitting high lines, but I know for me, what I'm specifically working on is opening up that angle. You know, I hit on the left, so opening it up and really like, testing people because people know i like to hit high lines they i already know that people know that so yeah. i think expanding and, and your good game. teams probably figured that out be, be a yeah. buyer before the technical time now oh yeah for right. sure so for sure i mean you can't sit there and hit the same shot over and over again yeah. i mean you can until mm -hmm. they adjust but right. it's all about game plan and being able to switch and play how much it's so is, hard how much does or did russell brock and um, 
Who's your, who's the blocking coach? Savage assistant at LSU. Tell me his name. Drew Hamilton. Drew Hamilton. Yes. How much did the two of them? Because they roll like a pack. There's yeah. some people. There's a head coach and there's everybody else. Those those two roll like a goddamn pair. Because I, I and I and I God I love those guys. Um, they came out karaoke one night. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Well, I mean, I was coaching uh, club beach for a little yeah, while. Um, yeah. And, and of course, you start to get to know everybody. Of course. I'll tell you a story where I, I lined them all up. Uh, um, <laughs> all the coaches, I'll tell you that story later. But how much, my question is, so it's fresh in our head. And yeah. so I don't talk more than you and on, <laughs> you're my guest. Because um, I do that shit all the time. I got people like, dude, shut the fuck it's up. It's okay. Even we now, they're it. telling me, you're doing we it again. Love it. But, um, how much did Brock and Hamilton come into that preparation where you start tackling teams like that from the get-go? This is an important question um, mm -hmm. because I think volleyball is more excited when someone who's interested in watching a sport see people go after it from play one instead of this feeling out process. Okay, I know what you're doing. You're doing by the time the technical timeout comes. And by the time the technical timeout comes, the person watching it's not watching it anymore. Okay, yeah. and those are the people we're trying to attract. I mean, uh, players, yeah. people who play the game, they're like, all right, uh, what, next game, I don't want to see yeah. that shit. You know, it's, I've seen this. They they played each other eight times and they're doing the same shit. Yeah. So how much, uh, if I'm shape, I'm taking a long time to shape this question. Yeah. How much does did they come into play as far as you guys preparing teams, um, g game plan from square one and then whatever plan B, plan C adjustments. The sh the flow is yours. Yeah, I. I believe our coaches prepared us very well just in the volleyball aspect first off just like you know we really trained passing hardcore so we were always fighting to be in system right so like it didn't necessarily really matter what other people did as long as we were in system and we were siding out mm -hmm. we felt we we were going to be successful right yeah but then as you work up to those higher level teams right there becomes a game plan right so yes you can be in system we can side out every ball we can work in transition for those lower to mid-range teams but as soon as you cross that line between the mid to the high there becomes like that prep prep work right where, where yeah. you create the game plan where you talk to your coaches and i believe they did a, a pretty good job like i think like we watched film before games a lot of us took it upon ourselves like player wise like mm -hmm. i think a lot of us would watch film on other people we had people like um kristen nuss she would watch every person's film lsu like yeah. she'd watch every person's film yeah. lsu we would sit down we'd watch other people's film as well and then i think going into games we weren't always focused on those higher teams like what they were gonna do but we knew if we just were in you know in system doing what we needed to do right it didn't necessarily matter i think game planning wise um i worked mostly with katie leak um yeah. so assistant coach at lsu right now and um we actually played indoor together so we played two years at lsu on the indoor team and um it was really fun getting to work with her right because for me i i want to coach post professional like i've been coaching club volleyball club volleyball doing lessons like all of this stuff like i know that that's where i'm supposed to be like i want to be coaching and so for me it was always fun to meet up with her and then talk through things, right? Because we both would put coaching, coaching brain together, not necessarily player coach. Right. Um, so I think game planning, it was super great to kind of sit down, maybe like after, um, you know, after the team had warmed up, right? We watched the whole warm up, we watched what they did, and then we kind of sat down and said, okay, look, this is what this girl did in the warm ups. We already know this from the film. Let's let's dial it in here. Let's do this. Let's do that. Um, as far as Russell and Drew, I never really got in game coaching from them. They were always on other courts, um, which was yeah, because you're only allowed what like three. Yeah, yeah three you're for only the allowed five pairs. Yeah, you're only allowed three, and so um, we were lucky. Lo lucky enough to have katie league i think she's great she's got a good brain she if she went if she came back to play right now she might not be in beach shape but she is one of the smartest players i've met high iq yeah yeah like did you play indoor with her or beach indoor okay just indoor yeah um she's just super okay. smart and like I would I would play in a tournament with, with her if she came out of retirement for sure hands down yeah. like I've talked to her about it multiple times but she's one of my good friends now and so but this is kind of I'm going down a rabbit hole now but but yeah I mean I think that they did a did a good job preparing us for playing those big teams and 
like you said, game plan is the most important thing, honestly. Well, it's important. Game and game plan. Um, at some point, it's going to become the most important. But yeah, I mean, in some people, a level of importance happens in game. And and like you said, there there is that. Um, I, to me, it's 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 um twitchy and grinding to watch mm-hmm. people. I mean, you're trading side outs because, like you yeah. said, you still got to take care of your side of the net. For sure. I just want to see people get after it more. Um, but uh, let's. I want to talk about something that because you talked about Katie. Yeah. Let's talk about something else important in a relationship. How important it is? How important is it to have a partner where you don't have to deal with your partner? Yeah, it's a it's a good. Question. I don't even have to elaborate on that. You That's already good... know. You already know how I'm asking that yeah, question. Yeah, I think. I think that you don't got to name names. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. Okay, one of the biggest things that <laughs> Drew would always say is. You never worry about what your partner's doing. Because I'd be like, you know, I'd talk to him. I'd be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. You know, my, my partner, blah, blah, blah. Let's say I told him something. He'd be like, there's nothing you can do that's going to fix them. Right. Right. So the, there's literally nothing you could say, nothing you could do. Like, you just got to let them There's plenty you play. could do to break them, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, right? You, you, can, gotta, you can do some bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I think, um, you know, sometimes when you play with partners that, let's say, are mental well yeah. that sounds that sounds bad well, but like mentally what else are we talking about it's yeah me- it's mental. yeah <laughs> yeah so like they're having trouble on the mental side not the volleyball side right, right? because the games like almost the whole thing is mental and then yeah. this little baby chunk is volleyball right so it's yeah. like you know you have all of this to worry about so when it comes to mental i think you know having a part like that it's understanding how they work Okay, right. He's he's telling me you can't do anything. But if you seriously sit there and have a conversation with your partner and really dive into what can I do to help you? I think that's kind of where you have to start. Right. It's, it's that open communication. It's the trust factor. Right. Sometimes when you don't trust your partner. Right. Mentally, they're not going to be there. Right. Like they're not going to be there. You know, so, so it just there's just a lot of things. Um. You know, I played with uh, I played with Kelly Agnew at LSU. I played with Ashlyn Rasnick Pope. Those were my two. You know, right. I played with Ashlyn Rasnick Pope the most. We played basically three years, two. I say two and a half. You know, with COVID and the first season, I played with Kelly Agnew about halfway, and then I flipped to Ashlyn. So, got to experience both of them, and they were both freshmen and new, right? Playing that first season of beach, my first season on the sand, like. Um, I think having the experience from, you know, indoor and already had been playing five years in college, when I crossed over to the sand and kind of knew I was going to be playing with a freshman, I think that's kind of where I was like, okay, I got to make them feel comfortable in this environment, right? Because they don't know anything about this, right? Juniors game to college game, big difference big difference it does I, yeah. I don't care what people say i think it's a huge difference i didn't play um beach juniors or anything like that i just did indoor but it's still a massive jump to yeah. college you know but it's the easiest way right I oh mean, yeah yeah think, when you think about it the best beach players that ever play the game are indoor players oh yeah i, I agree i agree for sure <laughs> i mean um, sorry <laughs> no 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 you're actually good. not so much but yeah i think playing with them kind of has helped me a lot in my game right um so as a partner yes maybe things that i do or say aren't going to necessarily help them but like if i keep asking them and like having open dialogue as we go through the season right me and ashlyn rising pope really got to build right so we kind of started from zero and we really worked our way up and i'm honestly sad about it because by the end of our last season yeah we were finally at such a good space as partners like communication wise understanding what we wanted from each other understanding what each other needed and it was just like sad to be done because we finally let me stop you right there you guys played 2021 and 2020 so we played like three tournaments in 2019 three tournaments in 2020 because covid right no but you played at lsu before covid shut down right yeah because i that was the season i thought you guys were hitting your stride yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was the season you you guys were housing everybody, and then 
that yeah. came and we'll talk about that in a little bit but go ahead yeah no yeah we i mean we really were building and it was cool because katie leak actually kind of really um got the open communication like more open right she would bring us in after games right we went to ucla it was one of our big bigger weekends it was like our first big weekend playing um we played usc and ucla right right yeah um same weekend this past season and when we got there you know it's ucla and usc right they're good teams yeah they know what they're they're doing we're 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 playing in the deep sand and you know it's it's different right but you know we lost a close three setter to ucla there Mm -hmm. right and then after the game we immediately sat down and we started dialing into what we needed to do for the next day against usc what mentally volleyball it was there the volleyball yeah, the was hard there. the hardware yeah. i call it hardware software exactly it was we sat down and we really talked about okay what needs to happen right? right and so she kind of created that path for us to really dial in our communication and really understanding each other and so i think you know playing with people that do have that um, you know, sometimes they get in their heads or, you know, things like that. It's just kind of understanding like how they can kind of like click out of it. Yeah. It's one of the biggest things. Yeah. And as I mentioned before, that's hardware software. Um, yeah. I was with John Mayer and we, we had a lot of disagreements, but I think a lot of it came from miscommunication. Like he's yeah. like, we take care of our side of the net. We'll win. And I'm just like, no (laughs) taking care of your side of the net helps you if you do everything perfectly on your side of the net it helps you beat the teams you're better than and lose the teams that's better than you so i've always had that standing disagreement with them but what i miss missed was taking care of your side of the net and it's and it's and and it's completion in all aspects i was just thinking about on court okay you took care of your side of the net good for you you know congratulations you're 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 30 and you're 30 and what you're you're 24 and 6 and all, all six of your losses were the teams that were better than you. Yeah. I mean, that's that's put, that puts you in a position where you're supposed to be. So I've always objected that because yeah. because I've always predicated my well my um, reputation was always find a way to do mm-hmm. more with less and beat teams that are better than me. So that's just been so I, I my opinion came from Greece, it came from the shaping of how I am as a coach. But what yeah. I was missing was John was talking about everything. John was like, the other team can't um, take away your time in the weight room, right? Yeah. The other team can't take away your time videotaping. The other yep. team can't take away how in shape you come on, on, on coming into a season. The other team can't take away your, your general nutrition. Yeah. The other team can't take away the constant repetitions where something feels comfortable, where that's now your default shot. You're doing yeah. shit right. Your, your, your default shot's right. You yeah. know? And I was like, okay, I get that. I yeah and and he's like and i get you too because it's something because he looks at it from such a wide range he appreciated mine yeah. because i'm a cold motherfucker all right <laughs> to me you can train you yeah. can do all these good things you can have great coaching and you can deserve to be there but just because you deserve to be there doesn't mean they're going to give it to you yeah, all right no. at the end of the day <laughs> where's my camera i don't mean to sound cold but either you win or you do not. I'm a Bill Parcells guy. You are what your fucking record says you are. All right. At the end of the day, and and you accept that to a level. How how much mm-hmm. is up to you? If you want that to f with your head, but it is. But that doesn't change the, that that um historical fact. Yeah. Historical fact on paper. Boom. You won or you did not. There yeah. are no fucking more more victories in a record book. Yeah. So he appreciated that aspect. Am mm-hmm. I doing it? And but is it working? And yeah. then from 2018 to 2019 to 2020, you look at the, their record, right? They were like six and 13, and the 22 and 14, and the 21 and nine. Finally, won the WCCs, and then 21, right? They, beat they actually at, beat you guys. Beat, and, beat us. And UCLA. People oh no, forget they beat the, us at uh, nationals. And UCLA the same day. They they played both of you guys the same day, and they they got oh, yeah. yeah yeah. And they got a spot to the semis, lost to USC, and then UCLA crept crept up and got in the end. But but people forget that they didn't just beat a, a very 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 good LSU yeah. team. You guys are ranked number six or or something like that. Something so. like that, yeah. But um, UCLA I think was one or two. So yeah. And it's not like he's recruiting all these fucking savages. Mm-hmm. He became, John was always a good coach, but John was never a do more with less coach. John always had, oh, uh, when he was coaching Santa Monica College, uh, he's always had good players that that, yeah. that eventually became his acolytes and, and whatever. Yeah. Um, but that was one of the handful of times I've seen him do more with less on an exponential level. And I'm not trying to pat myself on the back because 
there's take what the one or two things he learned from me multiply that shit by six that's what i learned from him Oh, Cause I had yeah. I had to learn that about beach. I had to learn that about women's volleyball. I was a men's coach my entire life. You yeah. have to it's you different. have to understand the fucking it's importance, di- dude. You have it's to different. Under- and this is Scott Davenport too. Da- yeah. Scott Davenport. It took him a long time to understand the, the intricacies of of sisterhood and not yeah. not not uh, saying anything that's going to make a female player look um, like an outcast to her team. Where they start treating her like that because they see yeah. you treating her like that. Yeah. The men, we don't care. Get your ass in line. Oh, <laughs> all right, coach. You know, because men, it's usually inspired by leadership. That someone, yeah. uh, they, they, some people take charge on the court and everyone follows their lead. You yeah. know, and Scott, Scott still coaches girls like dudes. Uh, uh, oh yeah, psychologically, I, I believe but, so. But um, I believe so. And I'm optimistic, if not hopeful, that he's. I haven't spoken to him and we're not like fishing buddies and he, I know more about him than he knows about me, but I really hope he turned the corner on that. Uh, and I'm sure he has. He's been doing this way too long. Yeah, I, I mean. Know? And I mean, he's a long time player, but I, yeah. don't, I don't put a whole bunch of weight on people who were playing a long time that automatically entitles them to think they're a good coach. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't play yeah. that. I don't play that shit. No, I agree. You know? I agree. Yeah. I think, like you said, the girls game is completely different than the guys game and it kind of shows, I mean, when I think about the guys game, all I think about is just like bombing balls, like just like hit the ball as hard as you can and you're going to score. Like that's what I think about the boys game. And like I haven't obviously dove into the boys game at all, but nah. like that's just what I think about. But under Scott, you train him like a dude. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, yeah, I think, but I think that that's good for people that want to play at the top level, right? Yeah. There, there comes a point where like, you have to be mentally tough Mm -hmm. and like when your coach is pushing you like you just got to do it like there's a you decide right Mm -hmm. you make the decision on if you want to if you want to like how you want to receive the message yes right you no one can make you feel a way that like nobody makes you feel a certain way Mm -hmm. and if you think about it like that then that's how you should go about it and you should you should take what he's saying not the way he's saying not how he's saying it just what is he saying and really like analyze what he's saying you know i feel like having drew i i, I believe drew's one of the toughest coaches i've had fran flory indoor coach at lsu i think yeah. she's a really tough coach like i believe that usually what they're saying is good stuff it's just sometimes the way it comes off right it's 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 like ah why are you gonna say it like that yeah yeah like why couldn't you just say it like you know like sweetly you know but but yeah you know, at the, end of the sweetly. at the end of the day. <laughs> oh the, my God, they're going to sing you a lullaby before no, you no, go no, back no. to the dorms, no. girl. I, I believe that being coached by both of them is one of the biggest reasons why I, like, I am like a mentally tough player. And, you know, obviously you know about all my injuries and everything. Like mental toughness, I think, is like the biggest thing that requires you to play at the highest level. Well, two things because we're gonna get into that. Uh, um, we just we are. Uh, you God, you you know how to drive this car, dude. Thank. I'm so glad I have you with me because the reason why this podcast has success is because of people like you that that need to take the steering wheel when I start talking shit. Um, but I want to finish with Scott, and, yeah. then we're, and we're gonna get yeah. into your physical injury that and your mental toughness or whatever. For sure. Because this is it's a story to tell because it's gonna inspire someone where they think all hope is fucking lost. So um, yeah, allow yourself the indulgence to talk about yourself as we approach that topic topic next um but with scott scott's challenge and this is where i challenge him and this is where i don't really know a whole lot about him and and again Mm -hmm. people can write to me email me scott you can call me and correct me on this your style of coaching creates a generational pattern right like ashley um who was on the uh, wendy's podcast um was one of scott's uh jedis and now she's coaching and her style of coaching uh with with the men worked fine with the women there were some challenges because of that all right and i'm only going to say this in terms of american coaching Mm -hmm. all right the europeans they do what the fuck they want when they want and if you don't like it tough shit Mm -hmm. you know and those girls grow up you think you have you think you have a tough trying to try try um being in the german system flugen wagner seems like a nice guy to everybody else that's a cold motherfucker all right Mm -hmm. um uh qatar coaches are pretty chill or whatever but there's a Serbia, Montenegro, Mm -hmm. Russia. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm talking like these hardcore Eastern European countries. They've been coaching like that for 40 years and everybody's like, oh, it's not working. Times have changed. Times have changed. If times have changed, why are they still doing that the same way and why the fuck are they still winning? Yeah. Why are they still winning? You look on the U.S., on the men's team, the men's scene. Mm -hmm. scene. Mm -hmm. 
almost every Olympics, the same four teams are USA, who finds who finds a way because we got all we got we got all, uh, some more players. So I mean, Jesus Christ, let's get some elite athletes instead of these second class citizens who are not playing basketball. Um, it's been the USA, Russia, Italy, and um, Brazil. Three of those four countries have old school coaches. Yeah. It's fair. Yeah. It's fair. And they're there all the time. Brazil. You look at the final four. And I'll go, let's say, just say 2004. Okay. You're not, you're, I mean, I'm not trying to get, talk about shit before you were born. All right. I'm not, I'm not, I mean, you can give a fuck about Elvis and Mozart. Um, <laughs> right. Or the Red Sea. All right. I was on the other side fishing, girl. When Mo <laughs> Moses part of that shit. Um, so I'm not, so I'll dismiss that. But I wanted to finish by saying that Scott, um, his big, because he's high level, he has, he's taking more challenges at, at that level that a lot of people don't have to deal with because he already knows the X's and O's. Mm -hmm. And he knows a lot about, he's understanding software and hardware and all yeah. that. And my challenge to him is know who you are because they, people are going to try to coach the way you coach when they're done playing. Mm -hmm. And they have to fucking understand that too. Yeah. And that was a big challenge. I, I wish I had her last name. Ashley Clark. Ashley, Ashley Clark. Clark. Savage, yeah. savage club coach. Coach yeah. Wendy's Wendy's kids, Luke Turner, you know, who's at Stanford, um, yeah. the daughter who's at a TCU. Yeah. Um, so yeah. uh, with for Hector, playing for Hector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had an injury. <laughs> how, how about that? Shoot. You had an injury. <laughs> <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> you, had an, you had an injury. I yes. think it was your senior year of high school. Yes. And you told this story on the Optimist Journal, and I had the pleasure of, of teching that show, the honor, duty, and privilege of teching that show, because watching you two go back and forth was, was <laughs> awesome. It was fun. You got hurt, and you I think you were supposed to go to Michigan State? Tennessee. Or, Tennessee. Yep, close though. And they were like, you know what? This chick is hurt. The hell with that. We ain't giving her no rot. Yep. Right. Basically, take yeah. me to that point in your journey. Talk, let's talk about the injury first. Yeah, for sure. And then take me to Tennessee, and then how it led to LSU. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna sit back and have a drink for this one. All right. Yeah. Do it. Um. So, uh, we were definitely favored to win a state championship my senior year of high school. Um, we were about three games into the season, playing the reigning state champs, um, Mount Carmel. Um, and got set a ball, hit it when I came down, um, you know, I was getting ready for, to block, right. I blocked. And then when I went to transition off the net, um, basically foot planted, knee went and which foot, um, my, sorry, which foot? No, you're good. You're good. Um, my left. And then when I turned to go, my foot just stayed in my you know, when you plant and then you twist, right? Okay. It's basically what happened. Like it wasn't contact. It was it was nothing. It was literally just me planted and just turned and my foot just didn't go with my body. Um, you know, immediately to the ground in pain. Obviously I'm screaming, which is kind of funny to me because I've talked to a lot of people about tearing ACLs and a lot of them are like, yeah, I tore it. But then I was like, got up and like walked around and I was like, no, like I was like on the ground, like probably, you know, being dramatic a little bit, but like that is not, you know, that's some pain. Like the when you tear yourself, like it does not feel good, obviously. So I was on the ground, you know, took me to the training room. I've never had a big injury. So I think kind of like the pain I was feeling, I was kind of like, oh shit, like what's going to happen? I don't know. Um, so basically got an MRI like a week later and ended up being in torn ACL had some meniscus stuff going on so you know as uh I think I was 17 at that point you know finding out that I had a season ending injury it's very um you know that's not the easiest thing in the world for a 17 year old to go through especially as somebody that's still like learning about yourself right like I didn't know who I was as a person I didn't know you know all I knew about myself was like I play sports I'm athletic I this is what I'm doing right and the whole time you're probably just thinking how long yeah yeah, yeah. basically like you know once I got the MRI I was like okay like when's the surgery like you know what I mean and so you know it was sad I was sad for a while um, and then so got the MRI and about a week later 
my parents got the phone call from Tennessee, uh, basically saying, "Hey, we we pulled your daughter's scholarship." Yeah, what we're we gonna do with a broke car? Yeah, <laughs> a car that didn't have two wheels. Basically, they needed me, when I got there. They needed me to play. Like uh, that was basically what it was. So that's th no, that makes complete sense. Yeah, like they needed they an needed outside that, ready. Yeah. They needed an outside ready. Yeah. And they ended up getting my um, club teammate that was also an outside on our team. So, oh, you know, cool. you know, it, it, everything works out for a reason. And yeah. I'm a big believer in that. Like, even more so to this day, like, I believe everything happens for a reason. And I'm a huge believer in, like, signs and, you know, full circle now. Like, she got an opportunity to go and play for that school. And, like, that was awesome for her, you know. So, it's at the end of the day, my experience at LSU was amazing. And I, w I wouldn't have it any other way so overall you know i'm not happy i tore my ace out but like you know lsu was great um so yeah i think when my parents told me about that though i think that on top of the season ending injury was more of like that was probably the toughest part like knowing like dang like i've worked so hard didn't start volleyball till i was in high school my freshman year so you had to work hard yeah like was I, there was the game. yeah there was no like stopping it was like go 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 you know as soon as i fell in love with the sport i was like okay i'm off like i gotta run with this and so i think that was probably the hardest part like working feeling like you worked so hard and then to like one have your have a season in the injury so you don't get to play your sport and two working so hard to where you can earn a scholarship and play in college and then not getting taken away too that's like a double whammy right like that's you know that's not something easy to go through and i think I think the biggest thing was like knowing that I could reach back out to LSU because I did reach out to them before Tennessee, but they just weren't actively recruiting me. Like, and I felt like I wanted to earn a scholarship. Right. You do have family that went there, right? Um, to LSU. Yeah. My sister went for a little while. Um, and, but, but I, but I grew up, you know, like supporting LSU. Product, yeah. Like I, like, it's funny cause people always laugh at me when I say this, but like, I genuinely do like bleed purple and gold. Like I love LSU. Like that is my school. That is my home. That is like what I've done since I was a child. Like I literally have like pictures of me like as a baby in like LSU clothes. You know what I mean? Like it was just like more like meant to be than anything. Um, so yeah, I think knowing that LSU was still there and knowing that I wanted to play D1, I knew I wanted to play for the SEC. Like it was just like I had to like it, it I didn't really have many other options clearly um so I reached out to Fran Flory indoor coach and basically was like look I just tore my ACL but like <laughs> I freaking love LSU and like I want to be on your team like can I be a part of your program and you know basically she was like yeah like you can totally you can totally be like on our team like um you'll have to walk on right so I walked on and she was like we want you to redshirt the first year because you're a noodle you just tore your ACL you're not going to be physical enough you're not going to be strong enough like you have to build this first year and I was like okay as much as this sucks and as much as I just got done with my recovery right I just finished like when I met with her it was probably a couple months into at like post-surgery but you know it was like hearing like okay like you're going to be good to play, but you're not going to actually get to play. You know, that, that was kind of like, oh, okay. Like I can, I can still do this. Like mentally I'm still there. Like I, I get to play, I get to practice, I get to do all these things, but like not getting to compete really was like, dang, okay. Like I can wait because it's going to be so good when I make it to that place where I can. And so she did promise me one year of scholarship when I, when I made the deal to go to, you know, when I talked with her to, to join the team. So I That's walked outside on. Hitter as an outside hitter yeah right. i was a middle in high school but as i got to my junior and senior year i was transitioning into like outside middle right side like i w i was more versatile than okay. like i i loved playing middle but i knew i was undersized you know <laughs> i was gonna write something down but you said you you said something <laughs> that made me change my mind because transition transition from middle to outside is um, out middle straight to outside is hard i i usually as a coach say play a little oppo get some yeah, get some real sure. touches first and then for whatever sure. but yeah sorry that's but that's what i was thinking yeah, yeah, when yeah. you saw me drop the pen so but yeah ahead. But yeah, so I transitioned into playing all three and then, you know, going to LSU, I was an outside, outside right side mostly. So, but yeah, I mean, it all worked out. And I mean, like I said, I think everything happens for a reason. And, you know, mentally, um, 
you know, when you finally get to put the jersey on, you know, again, right? Wow. You, you finally get to put the jersey yeah. on. And it's for, a, you know, it's a bigger platform. It's for LSU, right? You you get to put the jersey on, that feeling for the first time in however many months it had been since I played against a team, right? Like, that was magical. Like, that was a moment that was like super powerful, right? Because yeah. an injury like that is, it's, it can take a lot away from you. And that's what I wanted to talk about. Like, all right, I'm a little older than you. So when an athlete had an ACL injury mm-hmm. back, I mean, 80s, all the way up to the early 90s, well, no, all the way up to the 2000s, mm-hmm. pretty much till, till 2000, zero, zero, okay? Yeah. That was it. ACL, that's your career. Got to you. Got to find something else to do. You got to sell insurance. You got to fucking sell. You know, right? <laughs> you got to make. You got to make. You got to make spatulas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or as or as they do in Hermosa Beach and Manhattan Beach, do real estate. You yeah. Know? So um, I mean, it's fucking cut. Just talk about. I will cut your throat, man. Real estate is the worst, dude. I did real estate in New York for a couple of years. Yeah. Like apartment rentals, not even oh. sales. That is that is. Cutthroat. So I think. You have to appreciate the science, mm-hmm. and you, and, oh, and the 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 time and when you've gotten injured, and yeah. where it seemed like some people had this look, you didn't want to look at them because they gave you that look like all hope is lost, mm-hmm. right? And and even if you get back, you're never going to be the same. But there's something about the advancement in technology where a bunch of doctors get together and say, "Hey," and appreciate my humor here. We just sent we sent, we sent a motherfucker to the moon, <laughs> and and this one she we're just gonna give her a brace. No, just put put that on your knee, right? Someone's like, I'm paralyzed. Here's a wheelchair, right? Remember, remember Chris Rock? He said, I'm blind. He said, Can you do something about my eyes? Here's a here's a here's a dog. Here's a seeing eye dog. You know? Well, I think you should, honestly you should just have a seeing eye midget. You know? Because at least. <laughs> Right? No, because at least with them, you get to go drinking, you know? You get to, <laughs> you, get to you know. <laughs> but yeah. that's a, I stole that bit from Chris Rock. I'm citing him as my source. But what the hell's a dog going to do? Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that, sorry, is that the tequila or the gin? Whoa, 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 whoa. Right? You got to, what the fuck? You going to speak dog? Right? So, <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and it's a humorous, it's a satirical um, way to segue to my point. Uh, yeah. Like, for sure. I'm very, very glad that people were like, no, surgery is not so you can take it easy. Yeah. Surgery is so you can surgery is supposed to be for savages who want to get back on get back on that fucking horse. For sure. That fell off, all right. I think we both can concede cuz I want you to walk some people through it. Yeah. Percentage-wise. How much from surgery and rehab? Mm-hmm. What ratio would you give that? I'll go first. I'd say 10% surgery and 90% rehab. For you personally or for you philosophically, disagree with me, fight, fight me. No, I think, I think that that's, I think that that's a good ratio. I mean, I mean, the recovery rehab part's going to be the biggest, you know, the biggest portion of getting back to play, you know, the surgery is the easy part. Surgery, surgery is the easy part, right? Thank you. The surgery is the part where the doctor does it, you know? The doctor did all of it. You didn't have to make a decision to do your rehab. You didn't have he didn't have to make a decision to do the surgery. He did the surgery. It's done. You know, the recovery rehab portion is where you have to choose as the athlete. Okay, am I gonna do this like one hundred percent or am I gonna give this like a fifty percent effort, right? There's no there's not really a lot of time to really make that decision too. Like it's either you're fully in you can't really be halfway in. Yeah. I really don't believe that you can because there's a lot of things. I mean, you can be halfway in. It might take you a lot longer and you might never get to where you want to be. Because of that. Yeah. But I think when you take it, when you go all in, right, mm-hmm. you make that decision, it's it's from then until, until you're done playing. It's right. not from then until you start playing back again. It's It's a process. I'm still working on my posterior chain. Right. right. They took both hamstring tendons. I turned both and they took both hamstring tendons to create my new ACLs. And I swear to God, I don't have hamstrings anymore. No. Them things are gone. Good. Uh, nothing uh, to cramp up. Then. You know, so <laughs> so I, I feel like it's it's 
yeah, you have surgery and you you do your rehab and let's say it's six months post-op and you do six months of rehab. When that six months hits, that's just the beginning. Yeah, because it's beginning. like learning how to walk all over again in this. Yeah. Look, there are a lot of people that are listening to because this started as a volleyball podcast, but now I got yeah. I got normal human beings. And yes. the only reason why I brought it up is because I'm a former athlete. Um, you're an elite athlete you know top of the food chain no matter where you think you're ranked in the in, in the avp it's still better than 90 90 percent of people who play the sport so that's something i i have to remind people on that i have to maybe even have to remind you when you yeah, when you're worried that. about your confidence level um if you're worried about your confidence level i, I only brought it up because there are friends of mine that are non-volleyball players are just non-athletes mm-hmm. that it's like oh my friend had surgery on his knee his, his surgery sucked yeah Right. And and there is a level of thinking out there about, oh, I need a good surgeon to make sure my surgery is right. And I'm like, and I think what a lot of people are missing who don't. Uh, and this is for people. Uh, and I'm, I don't mean to speak from up here like athletes are better and smarter than you guys. I'm not trying to say that. I swear to God. Yeah. But there are people who don't um, use their body to do these these savage things yeah. that are trying to find a surgeon they can trust yeah when the person i think you should really find to trust is you say it with me you you. yes and your physical therapist yeah for sure find someone you trust like like tell yourself all right i'm gonna do some research but i really don't know a lot about this i need someone to tell me what i need to do to get back and he needs to be right yeah who is it you know so so that so that i that does that's the reason why i said 90 10 because the surgery don't mean shit well i'm gonna be honest with you Go ahead. As a 17-year-old, do you ever think that I thought, hmm, I wonder who my surgeon is? Yeah. No. Do I wonder if this guy... I wonder if this guy's done any ACLs. No, that's no. Well, I'm not worried about any farts. of that. All I'm worried about is him doing the surgery and me immediately grinding through the rehab process. That's all I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. I know he's going to do his job. He does this all the time. Right? right. These doc- My doctor... My doctor has done three of my surgeries now. I am worth a lot of money. I'm just going to say it right yeah, there. Yeah, you are too. All right. You're going to put a All price right. tag on Doctor, this one. Dr. Carrie Winder, thank you. Shout out to you. You're probably not going to watch this. I don't know. I might send it to you now because shout out. Well, you got to share hey, if you remember. That's but right. Ahead. That's right. Um, he is incredible. And I've trusted him through the whole process, regardless of if I knew him or not. Right? I didn't know him personally. I didn't know him. I didn't know him as a doctor before I tore my ACL. Like I didn't, I didn't know him at all. But I was like, okay, he's gonna do it. Let's do it. Like it wasn't a matter of this, like who's doing the surgery, what's what the surgery is, any of that, right? I mean, I knew what I had to do on my part. No, of course. Right, and that's the hardest part. Oh, you did at seventeen. That's pretty cool. That's hard. Yeah, like knowing I had to grovel through it, right? Like it's just a grind period of time. Like yeah. I mean, what? I'm not saying. I mean, it was what the easy. hell do you do when you're 17? I mean, do you uh, ever see Forrest Gump when he, he like joined the army? Uh, yeah. They're like, Gump, what is your objective in this goddamn army? He's like, to do whatever it is you tell me to. Oh, goddamn, you're gonna make general someday. <laughs> That's just we just do it. 18, right? I mean, well, he went to uh, Alabama yeah. first, but at like 18 in your 20s, you just fucking do what you're told and you trust people. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Mm. I think uh, kind of going off of that, like uh, going into my second injury. That's kind of that's kind of where the whoa the doubt. whoa second injury which was what i tore both <sighs> yeah 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 come on yeah come on go on, go you're on. a fucking bionic woman right now dude that's what i'm saying we can rebuild her like i'm literally a robot basically <laughs> Not you, really, but he's fixed everything. No, you got that look. Uh, yeah. I'm like, I'm not thinking Stepford wife. I'm thinking Cylon from Battlestar Galactic. <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm basically bionic. But yeah, I think uh, going into my uh, second injury. So that first one was in 2013, right? I graduated high school in 2014, walked on to LSU redshirted that first year and then got to start competing in 2015 that fall and i actually got a grand opportunity and it was just super awesome to to get to step out there right talking about putting on that jersey and finally getting to play and getting to represent lsu a school that i've loved my whole entire life like it was really awesome and we made it about halfway through that season and our team just started dropping like flies 
No. I'm not geez. joking. I'm not joking. Like flies. You're like, who's the strength and conditioning me, coach? Everyone's <laughs> getting fucking hurt, man. Me, Stop. <laughs> me and um, one of our middles, we both tore ACLs that year. It's kind of it was kind of awesome though because uh, that was probably one of the biggest things that she was one of the biggest reasons that got me through the hard times within that surgery because it was tough. I I'll tell you a little bit more once I get there, but we both tore ACLs. We had one girl um, hurt hurt her ankle, like just so many things, and then Katie Leak, her ankle exploded. Like when I say exploded, like her bones like came out of her skin like it was crazy oh my this God. was after i was hurt and we they were at kentucky playing oh, and geez. she was in warm-ups no no in warm-ups no, yes, no. yes 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 we had so many people out and um but yeah that season was crazy terrible but like started off so well like so well and then like just crash and burn but you know, going going back to the injury part, I, me and my setter ran into each other into a, in a game. We we hit each other, and I I knew something didn't feel right, but I knew it wasn't torn then. Um, but I ended up coming out of the game, sat out, and um, took like a week off, and then trained right before we played the next day. And you know me, I'm 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 the type that's like. I'll, I'll ask for extra reps because like I want to get it right like that's kind of how I was indoor like I was always looking to get better like just get get reps basically and so um I had asked for extra reps after I'd been out for a week right I was be- I was out for a week you know I needed I, need- I felt like I needed some reps you know and so I had asked my setter to set me I, I hit like two balls and then on the third ball I went up swaying when I came down and landed my knee just gave out like it literally just tore like basically what I'm thinking in my head when I think back to that moment is that it was like attached by like a like a strand right you know it was so like it was like it was going to tear regardless of what I did there was nothing I could do to prevent that from happening and if it wouldn't have happened then it would have happened in the game like either way it was gonna happen because it was so like fragile basically because i didn't twist how, I that's turned. how it felt though. yeah i mean yeah yeah i didn't twist turn or anything i literally landed and it it i tore it you know so um you know i'm on the ground screaming again you know all this stuff and i knew i knew i knew it tore me so like and and my coaches were sitting there telling me like it's okay like it's okay like and you you're didn't. just like no like i'm literally like no like i <laughs> Like I know what this pain is. Like I've I've felt this pain. Like I know that it's torn. Um, and so going in, I mean, got the MRI. Wasn't shocked when they told me I tore my ACL. Like I, I obviously I was bummed. You're know, like I recognize. I'm not a doctor, yeah. but I recognize the symptoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is similar to what I felt. And like my coaches were trying to stay positive, and like I I appreciate them for that. And but but I kind of knew. And so got the MRI, got the news, and basically. You know, obviously, you're always going to be bummed. Regardless who you are, you're going to be mad, angry, upset. You're going to have these feelings after you have a season-ending injury. But for me, I think knowing that I had already did it once, I knew I could do it again. Right? Yeah. I mean, wow. That's, I mean... You, I mean, your the comeback is furious. I'm, for look, sure, the comeback wasn't just I can walk and 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 you know I could still do this well, but not this well like yeah. I did before. No, your your comeback was this is this is a great. This is why the guy asked you to tell the story. Your your comeback is was furious. Yeah, it's it was insane. Yeah, I will strike. <laughs> what is it, Pulp Fiction? I will strike down with great fear, uh, great, great vengeance and furious anger. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit. Sometimes I look back and think to myself, like, mm. how did I do this? Like, how, how did I go through this? Yeah. Like, how did I get back to where I'm, where I am? Like, I don't. Like, sometimes it's just like when you're in the moment of those things and you're thinking, like, dang, this is tough. This is hard. This is. God, this is terrible. And then you finally make it out on the other side, right? And I'm obviously like a couple years out now, and I'm just look back and think, holy moly. Like, I don't understand how I got through it, but like, I did, I did that. Like, I did that. And all the people that 
supported me and helped me they did that they helped me do that like yeah. it's just well, super powerful they're emotionally invested i mean oh, yeah. you're gonna look you're gonna run into a bunch of people who um they're paid to do a job but at some point then you you realize you're like wait they're not paid to care and they fucking care no, they care for free um, well anyone well speaking for myself and maybe for you right now right you're with elite i mean it's very synonymous synonymous to coaching club all right mm -hmm. kids get good they get better they have these discoveries and, and then you find yourself you wanting it wanting it from them wanting it for them oh, in yeah. like this huge way so not 100%. not exactly the same comparison because you're yourself and taking care of your physical health always takes priority over what some yeah. ent entitled south bay kid um does or says you know um and i didn't mean entitlement in a, in a bad way i'm just no, mean, I know. you know no, no just opportunities you. right i get you I get you. look I get come you. on i live in hermosa beach i'm never gonna look at my girl like I'm from Flatbush, Brooklyn, okay? I'm not gonna look at my daughter and be like, little girl, you could be anything you wanna be. No. Yeah. She's gonna be like, I know that, Tad. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> right? South Bay, they don't have to have that conversation with yeah. their kids. You know, yeah, like, like a kid from Brooklyn or Flatbush yeah. Avenue, son of an iron worker. So before I ask my next question, yeah. is there any fucking other injuries I need to know about? <laughs> because this, this is related to your injuries. Yeah, I mean, um, after my second ACL, I I ended up developing this crazy gnarly infection. Hold up, I was kidding. Go ahead, but no, gosh, holy but no, shit! Yeah, yeah, Go yeah, ahead. yeah. Got this infection. Wow. At uh, Thanksgiving, uh, I had like my surgery like the week before Thanksgiving, and um, then I developed the infection. Went to the hospital for a week. Was like it was so gnarly. Like oh my god. Like I was put on like a morphine drip. Like it was insane the amount of pain I was in. And they ended up doing two clean outs. Like so they went back into my scars. So like scars from where? From, from your, my ACLs. Your, okay, yeah. Got so it. like if you like I'm not gonna show you because I have leggings on, but like if you look at my scars, you can tell the difference between like my first mm -hmm. surgery, and my second, right? Because my scar from my second one was open. Um they opened it uh so for the original the two clean outs and then a, a third time because I had to have a scar tissue clean out like a couple months post-op from that surgery. But anyways, was in the hospital, did the clean outs, got a pick line. You know what that is? Yeah, I do. That's well, tell everybody what it is. Gnarly. Tell everybody. What, that was on. the biggest needle I've ever seen in my life. When you saw it, your eyes were like. <gasps> I was like, I'm scared. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically they put that sucker right here. Right, so they stick that needle in through one of your veins and they run this little baby tube all the way to your heart and you administer antibiotics um, so it gets to your heart faster. Yeah, so my mom and my dad, thank you, kudos to you guys, for administering six weeks of antibiotics post-hospital. That was tough. Oh um, my yeah. God. Also, God. my leg was in this like, oh. my leg was in this uh, mobilizer so basically you can't move your leg. One of the most important things after surgery is to move your leg. Okay. As much as as much as, much as, as you, you can, as yeah. much as you can. It's not you. You know, when they say you could start rehab, you need to start. Yes. Like you need to start moving that thing immediately because the scar tissue buildup is real. It is. It's uh, yeah. And <laughs> I had so much scar tissue. My leg was also a noodle. Literally, I lost all of my quad muscle. Right, because you do pre rehab. Right, you do the rehab before your surgery yeah. to get your your muscles like firing. to know what they're supposed to feel like. Yeah, yeah. and you you want to like get them all strong and stuff before you go into surgery because when you come out of surgery, you lose muscle every time you you're opened, right, to do a surgery, you lose muscle. I was I was opened four times, right? So my leg was the size of my calf. I'm not even gonna lie to you; Jeez. it was small. I was like. <gasps> And you're like I'm gonna be in a fucking wheelchair. I'm not gonna be okay. Um, but yeah, so. you're like that's my arm. That looks like my arm, dude. <laughs> Basically, um, but yeah, so that was probably one of my tougher like seasons of life. Going through that, um, I was set back probably two to three months re in rehab. Um, it was just gnarly. It was gnarly. It was it was tough. Like. Before I had that clean out of scar tissue, like I'd go into the training room and my trainer, um, Alicia, shout out to you, she would just push my leg and it just wouldn't go. So much scar tissue, right? I would only get to like 75%, like 75 degrees, sorry. Fuck, dude. Right? And like I'd just sit there and she'd just be like pushing, pushing, and I'd just be like, 
tears are just like coming out of my eyes i'm not like crying but like tears are just coming out like i'm did, like were you, did in you, pain were you were you looking at it or did you have to look away uh, yeah i i had my eyes closed most of the time trying not to look because it was just so just gnarly don't look it's so gnarly makes everything twitch up yeah 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 like what you told, said before about sticking that thing in your arm all the way up to whatever i'm like i'm not gonna look at that needle People want to give you too. People want to give me shots, and people want to do my blood test, and they're like, "All right, I'm gonna stick you right in the." I'm like, "You don't have to tell me. I'm, I'm looking, dude. I'm looking this way. Yeah, I'm not yeah, being yeah. a prima donna. Yeah, 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 I'm not like yeah. not trying to see you. I just don't want to look at no damn needles, dude. I don't want to look at no fucking needles, dude. Yeah, needles, needles suck. I've actually, when I was a child, I was like deathly afraid of needles, and now I'm like, this is easy. Like, if I need to get a shot, or like, I got some stem cell injections over Christmas break, and like, that was just like a piece of cake. I'm just like, okay, yeah. <laughs> stem cells are a real thing, man. Yeah. Stem cells are probably the best damn thing that ever happened to yeah, us, I, us as a species, besides, really red, nice. besides red meat. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> really, really good, uh, really good for just maintenance. That's why I got them. But, uh, but yeah, just going back to the surgery thing, I'm just going to mention it. I had rotator cuff surgery, but like, it wasn't anything crazy. A lot different than the ACL, but, you know, through every single injury um, and surgery, I got to learn more about myself. And I think that's kind of the cool thing going through something like that. When you really get to learn how to be mentally tough and get, you get to learn more about yourself and who you are and what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. And, you know, you let that feed into your, your drive and, and what you're trying to what you're trying to do, you know. So, yeah, I, I keep looking to the right because today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm teching my own show. So I usually <laughs> have Miranda come in and tech my show. But today I got to I got to show some skill and most of it's on a split screen. So that's but, right. Wow. Dude, some some gnarly, gnarly, savage injuries. <laughs> and I wanted to cover all the injuries because I'm going to ask a question that's a little bit tougher. OK, yeah, and, go for it. Um, disclaimer, I ain't trying to make you cry <laughs> anything <laughs> like that. But um. <laughs> 2020 it comes right you got a good season beach season mm -hmm. you start beating all the right teams at the right time and, and even in your losses you're learning something like i'm i'm 90 sure we play them again we're going to beat that team and that's yep. it. and that's how you feel because i know i talked to Kristen and taryn they were on a podcast um actually twice but we we talked about this a little bit so all of a sudden i have two questions okay some point you get a call or your coach makes this an announcement your season's over your season's finished my first question is where were you who were you playing or um when you found out that 2020 was 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 done with you, for you um i was at Win dixie actually we had had a team meeting kind of about COVID and kind of like Russell told us like what was going on. And at that point, we didn't know necessarily if the season was canceled outright. Um, but he was like, hey, you guys like this is coming and like you need to go get groceries and like and you, quarantine. Yeah, you need to get to your houses and like stay at home. And so we went to Winn-Dixie. I was with um, I believe I was with Jess Landsman. Okay. Karen Cloth, and uh, I can't remember if Kristen was there or not, but I, I just remember going to Kristen's the grocery store. Kristen's little. She don't serve no purpose bringing back a bunch of groceries. You need big girls, man. So that go to Long stay arms, long arms, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so we were at Winn-Dixie and basically mm -hmm. get a call um, that this, mm -hmm. this season has been canceled. And I, I believe I was with Taryn. And Jess would, drove by herself. And so we get the call and we literally all three like met up in the middle of the parking lot and would just was just crying and hugging each other and just pure, pure sadness. Like, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Just like the feeling of defeat to work so hard um, for something and to finally like feel it. You know, like the season before 2019, I think we had a grand opportunity, but we had a lot of new people, right? We had some, um, you know, I came from indoor, Taryn came from indoor and, 
you know, we had freshmen and, you know, we, we were a little more seasoned in 2020. We were ready, right? We had six foot across the board. From the ones down to the fives, six you foot got, plus. You blockers. guys looked like the number one team in the country. Yeah, I mean, we were set. You looked like the number one team in the country. It, that's yeah, yeah. So, um, I ask that because I think for a lot of people that don't play a sport at a high level, or even play a sport at a level that that they know requires physical and mental preparation, mm -hmm. right? Like you don't have to be a top five college team to appreciate the hard work. Yeah. Or, or Division Three, or Division Two, or Division One team to appreciate all the bells and whistles that have nothing to do with volleyball. Never mind that, right? But all the physical and mental preparation just to get to your first game of the season. The recruiting, it's working on how you're going to go to college, work, working on how to balance to balance your study time and video video room time, which is almost equal in some places. That's all you do. I mean, you don't mm -hmm. you, right? You, they won't yeah. let you have a job, and. The reason why I bring that up is because I really got angry at some people. It's like, oh, this is a pandemic and these people are crying because they can't play volleyball. And I'm like, screw you, dude. Screw you. If you've, you know, and this is why athletes are sensitive. Yeah. This is why it's, look, volleyball players, they, as far as sensitive cats are concerned, they're second only to NBA players, okay? Yeah. They'd screw you. What have you done your whole life, you know, and this and that? Like, I've, I've done this. You've never been top five anything and this and that. And these, yeah. these, these de the defensive mechanisms where they're insulting people that they don't know because the people that are insulting them, they don't know them, right? Yeah. There's a, uh, I'm defending those people who, um, not, not the people who are teasing you for yeah. crying about a season. I'm defending people like... Well, people like you, but not maybe you. People yeah, like yeah. you that say, hey, why don't you f be in my shoes? Yeah. Do, do something for years and years and years, right? Hundreds of thousands of people want this opportunity. I, I get it. I get this opportunity. I'm here. You know what I'm saying? And, and I battle things uh, off the court that you'll never know about. Yeah. Only for someone like you to say, oh, wow, wow, wow. And she, she, she can't play volleyball because of COVID. And it re the reason why I... I uh, it's cool because it gets rid of the tears. Now you got a little anger in you, uh -oh. <laughs> right? You know, you know, you're not crying no more because you're like this. This guy's freaking right. You know, screw <laughs> you. Um, but I wanted to make sure I said that because I have um, a lot of listeners, different, uh, different, whatever. You have to appreciate what it takes, even in a high school sport, to be the best players in your high school. Yeah. You know, uh, do that and, and take that, multiply that by 10, that's college. Take that, multiply that by another 10. So you, that's 10 times that 10, that's professional. Yep. And I just want people to say, chill, you know, because I'm always teasing volleyball players. I'm like, oh, screw you. you. Why are you criticizing my serve? And you, you can't do it. And I'm like, no, I can't do it. But I know what I see. Don't miss, don't miss 14 fucking times. All right? <laughs> I don't need to be a, a, a pro player to know if you miss 14 serves, you ain't going to win. So I, I'm always, the last few times on my podcast, I've been defending the other people. Yeah. And telling pro athletes and, and girls like you, stop being so fucking sensitive. Mm -hmm. Be able to take some criticism on a level where someone who's never seen a sport or someone who's always seen a sport, because those are the two people you need to listen, need to, listen to because they're honest. Yeah. But today I'm on your side. I don't, I, I really, it really pisses me off. And now I'm doing my little critique on everybody. I'm firing off on everybody. So my second question is, what hurt more? Coming back from the physical injuries or, or COVID shutting you down? For sure, COVID shutting down. I know that sounds kind of, that might sound crazy to some people, but we can never get that season back, right? I can get my body back to physical shape that I was before surgery. You've shown that. I can, yeah, exactly. And so I think I think injury is just an, a way of just becoming stronger mentally and, and physically. Like it just put me in a better position now. Like I'm in a better position than I was then. And, and like, like I said, I'm not, we will never get that season back. We will never, let me be honest with you. 2021, not the same season, all the same people. It'll never, no, I can't feel the same. all the same people and not the same season. Tell me how that works, right? That 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 that's an example right there for you. Like everything lined up so perfectly 
And like, it just won't ever happen like that again. You know, like, I just don't like, we could have had that happen, but it just wasn't meant to be, you know, clearly on both ends of the spectrum for, for the COVID season and for the 2021 season, it just wasn't supposed to happen in that way. And I'm, I'm still, um, salty. Yeah, I, I'd say I'm still hurt by a lot of things and angry about COVID and, you know, but what I will say is like the experiences that we did have during that season were, were fantastic and I'll always have those memories. And actually two days ago, I believe in my memories, um, two days ago, maybe three days ago, um, was a memory of us in Hawaii for that first, uh, first season. That yeah. first tournament, that season, and you'd beaten them. We yeah. beat UCLA. We won the tournament, and and you beat Hawaii in Hawaii. Yeah, which we did. is we did. We, we I mean, one of our topic is about venues where people have superpowers. Yeah, <laughs> Hawaii. Hawaii is a hard. Hawaii is an, a near impossible team to beat in their house. You, you, yeah. You know. Oh yeah. No, I believe no. it. Every, the Hawaii five zero is so applicable for beach because they just five. Yeah. They five zero people who visit them. Yeah. But go ahead. Hawaii was actually pretty traumatic for me. I will say, <laughs> I um, I was in the Normatec after we played our second game of the first day, and I sat up in the Normatec. I was laying flat on the ground. I sat up in the Normatec and immediately went into quad cramps. Like both quads were cramped up, like hardcore. Like I've never seen anything like that before. And I was literally like, get the trainer, get the trainer. And all my teammates are like sitting around me, like eating their lunch. And they're just like, what is going on? Yeah. And I'm like, get the trainer, get Mallory. Oh and my God. Yeah, literally full. That was Hawaii, huh? Yeah, full quad cramp. Well, it's humid as, I mean. It's it, was, no, it was hot. It's, it's Louisiana humid though. Yeah, but we hadn't been p p practicing in that kind of like, weather though because like right now in louisiana it's kind of like really crappy weather like it's like right. cold and rainy and just like gross and, and, dry, then we, yeah. and we get to hawaii and it's like kind of hot and like humid and i'm just like what is this it's not dry hot though Go also ahead. also i think my body was just in like complete shock because we flew eight hours the day before we played my body was literally like, what the hell are you doing? You're stupid. Like, stop doing this. Like, what are you doing? And I, I think I just couldn't catch up on the hydration in, in, in enough time. But anyways, got to the hospital, got an IV, got some electrolytes, played the next day. We beat Hawaii. We beat UCLA. So yes, was it traumatic? Yes. Did we beat UCLA for the first time in program history? Yes. So uh, it was going to happen. Can't, I can't, I can't be mad about it, you know? Well, you can because <laughs> just be, look. You were, you were being all honest and this and that, and, you, and I know you're trying to do do the, the, the PC thing and think glass half full, but there are seasons where you are you don't look back retrospectively. You can mm -hmm. look back retrospectively and say, that mm -hmm. was magical. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like um, I myself, I've had plenty of those. Like, yeah, Look sure. at that hardware behind you. That's um, that's a plaque from German. German Region 1, the Hessen Falls League, Prof Professional League Division 1. If that season didn't happen, I would um, I, pro I probably wasn't going to win one. I, w I wasn't going to win a, D uh, a championship there. Yeah. Um, the Army European Championship that you know, that was a magical run too. Yeah. That didn't happen the year before. Um, I left the military, and, and but if I stayed, it probably. I'm honest, it wasn't going to happen the year after. Yeah. There yeah. is, there are these time periods where you're like, if this is going to happen, it's going to happen here and now. And the easy thing is to look back at those things retrospectively. We're here and now we could look back. Yeah. But but when you're in the moment, like present tense, mm -hmm. and you know it and you feel it, that's a great feeling. It's one of the greatest feelings in the world. Like, Because you're saying present tense, I'm going to look back at this someday and, and knew that I knew that I was in that moment and I got taken away from you. So fucking yeah. just, just, you know, I mean, the cool thing is, look, the cool thing is you already went with the story with Wendy, so you ain't gonna cry now. Like oh, every, yeah, everybody, no. you're over it. Uh, but, I'm, um, I'm not gonna but cry. But Nuss and, Nuss and Cloth, they, they were they were water tanks. Um, Evan Corey, cause it happened in his season with um, uh, Lincoln Memorial. Um, and that was supposed to be his camp, like his campaign year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, um, just- <clears throat> Please, go ahead. I will always be upset about it for sure. Like okay. it'll probably always like it'll always probably sit wrong with me. I think a lot of the reason why maybe I'm not boohooing or like upset right now, right? Okay, th this is honest. I've been, um, I'd say I've been super patient in my um, development and where like I'm trying to be, and so 
Um, like at LSU, I was never the standout. I was never the All-American. I was never, uh, I was never the biggest player or the the most well-known player on the court. Never was. Never was. I am from a small town in Louisiana called Santa Mall, and I. I wanted to be the big player. I wanted to win the awards. I wanted to do those things, but it wasn't there for me to do. I, I was always more of the leader, the team player, the, you know, like, let's rally the troops. Like, let's let's do this, right? I was always the, the person that just, like, fired people up, like, talked, communicated. Like, that was me in a nutshell. And so just kind of going off of that, like, I'll always be sad about it and I'll always, you know, I'm I'm still mad about 2021 season. That sits really bad with me right now still. I'm going to be honest. And I'm not I'm not okay I with know. it. Well, the um, last half full you did beat Florida State who kind of had your number that year. Yeah. Beating them when it counted that Definitely. That, was, that was cool. But that go, counted. But go ahead, sorry. Um, but kind of just going off that like I feel like I've been super patient and I moved to California in September for me. I moved here for my goals, which was to play professional beach volleyball. And I didn't know I didn't know a lot of people here. I'll tell you that. I moved out here blindly, basically. And I have figured it out since I stepped out here. Since day one that I've gotten here, I've I've just been trying to figure it out. Right. And I've been working my way into this this new thing, right? Professional beach volleyball. It's not the easiest. I'll say it. It's not easy at all. And everybody that's already on tour and trying to get on tour, we're all working so hard. Like the people on tour, they've already put in that work and they're still putting in the work. For me, it's about putting in the work to get to the tour, right? So I just, yeah, I'm, I'm going to always be mad about that season. And, and I don't need to sit here and cry about it because I've already done that. I did that. I've lived it. I've experienced it. I, it'll always be like, I'll always be upset about it. But I know there's bigger and better things that are on the horizon and I have goals that I've set and I have people surrounding me and I feel like I can do whatever I put my mind to at this point. And so I feel super um, like hopeful and just have like lots of optimism on like this upcoming season and just like my future in beach volleyball. Like I like, yeah, I'm upset, but like I can't like live and like think about that all the time right like i right. gotta keep moving on and i gotta keep thinking about all these other new opportunities and big things that are happening and coming my way and just like i don't know like yeah i'm just i'm just really grateful to be here did your history of, of physical injuries and having to deal with the psychological aspect of that help prepare you for um these worst case scenarios 100 percent, 100 percent. and yeah yeah i said earlier that COVID was worse but the you know, I mean, pain, pain of an injury, like an ACL and, you know, like that's freaking physical pain, you Savage, know? Yeah. And yeah, like there was pain like that when we, we heard about our season ending. Like I, I will say, like I was at first, I think it didn't necessarily hit me as hard, but then like, as it became a realization, you know, it got harder and harder. And once COVID hit, that's when I had my shoulder surgery. So instead of worrying about I mean, obviously I was worried about COVID, but like I quarantine happened uh, maybe like March, 2020. Yeah, pretty one. Well, yeah. March, 2020. Right. I, I, I my, remember distinctly and I'll yeah. tell you why later, but go ahead. Yeah. March, 2020. And then May, 2020, I had my shoulder surgery. So I was on to the next, right? Yeah. Like I, yeah, I grieved. I grieved a lot that summer. I did. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll kind of just give you a little background, but our season ended. I had shoulder surgery and it was the first anniversary of my sister's passing away. So it was a tough summer. Let me just tell you, it was not a summer that I want to ever relive again. It was, I'm, I'm being straight up real right now. Like one of the hardest summers I've ever gone through, you know? And like, that's probably maybe one of the reasons why I don't like to look back on the season. Cause it was such a, like, I don't know. It just wasn't a good one. No, it was good a, season of life, right? Like, like it was, it was tough. Pooch screw season. I mean, basically, try not to curse. Pooch screw. That's the best I could do to avoid the word clusterfuck. Uh, I 
Yeah, well. <laughs> but yeah, so. my Yeah, my father passed away um, February 2000. And I didn't get a chance to, uh, they couldn't fly, right? Yeah. So I didn't, um, well, he's my stepfather, but as far as I'm concerned, he's my father. He's your father, um, yeah. Like, um, he, he raised you. My real father I never yeah. met, so. Yeah. I mean, what, what else is there? There's this, there's this guy who married my mom when I was 10 who was an iron worker that showed me how to read yeah. blueprints and cuts, yeah. cut steel yeah. and paint and weld and do all these things. That was the first job I had when I was 14. Yeah. Blue collar old school Humphrey Bogart hairstyle you know yeah. like you know you know it's like everybody had the same hairstyle in those black and yeah. white films he was he was he was that guy yeah. he was that guy that worked um he was the foreman of American Ironworks the locksmiths because mm-hmm. American had locksmiths they had carpentry they had glass work and they had ironworks but they cut glass they cut ironworks but he was um that was the guy to tell me the value of hard work um how to say sir ma'am old school shit like yeah. hold, hold a chair for a girl hold a door you know stuff that's Definitely. that people think is sexist and i'm like no it's polite you know it's it also is. demeaning i'm like no it's polite it's polite. <laughs> um, it is polite and he passed away and i couldn't bury him so i have um i have a lot of um um it's a lot of things i wish i could just erase too I was. I mean, we should just consider 2021. Just call that 2020, and just forget, forget that year ever happened. No matter what people think about this pandemic and where the politics lead, all that shit. Collectively, we did some major Chekhovian suffering as yeah, a people that I thought sure. was that, that I thought was very uniting, and people put their money where their mouth was. Mm-hmm. And I'm very, very glad that um you got you found a way through that. But I really, but based on your story. You kind of treated it like another obstacle, and and I'm not saying it didn't hurt. You're not a fucking machine like you are. Well, you, I mean, uh, you're built like a machine. Maybe and, and <laughs> you're built and rebuilt like a machine, but but you're a person, and yeah. I get that because yeah. you handle it better the better than I did. I mean, I ended up yeah. cursing an old dude out because I found him. I was at Starbucks with a mask, and they're handing me shit outside. Because remember, Starbucks you couldn't go in. And then my best friend, her her mother died. She's like, not that this is a competition or anything, but my mom died too. And I'm just like, this is crazy. And this guy's like, I'm trying to drink my coffee. Do you mind? And I and and I'm like, I just found out my father died. Oh God. You know, and I'm like, I'm yeah. sorry. I just sorry about that. Hey, just found out my father. I don't care. I don't. And yeah. I'm like, man, I said, I hope you fall off your fucking chair, Santa. You know, he looked like dirty Santa or something like that. Some old some old entitled dude. I said, why don't you go why don't you go F you? I, dude, I went off on a nice. on a dude that that um one of my weaknesses is, is, is proportional response. Yeah. Uh, I always give people five, give people back five times what they give me, and I've never been good at um, pro- something we call proportional response. Yeah. So, uh, and I feel bad about giving it to that guy, but at the same time, I was a prisoner of the moment. Yeah, no, so. sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes we react and we don't, you know, we don't sit and really analyze before we say what we want to say, you know, and sometimes, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It just, it happens. Is, it happens to everyone. Is, yeah. Happens to everyone. And I think kind of going back to, you know, talking about 2020, um, when we found out we got another season, that COVID year, right? Seventh year, baby. Famous seventh year. There it is. Right here. Who do you know about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, when we got that news, right? It was like, for me, it was like, okay. We've got the same ki- we got the same people, same coaches, same same strength and conditioning, same this, same that, same, same all this stuff. And I think, you know, as much as I was sad, I was also like, this is another opportunity. It might not look exactly the same. It's not going to be the same. No, right? we had already we had already established that. But how many people get that? Right, even get even that. Right, but like I knew there was another opportunity, and you know, as an athlete. We thrive and we want, we, we, we like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We like our thirst, like we thirst for more like opportunity. And so for me, I think, you know, I'm, I'm in this terrible summer, this, this, I'm in a dark place with the surgery, with all this stuff. But also at the other end, it's, oh, we've got another opportunity. We've got another season to figure it out. We got, we got a, another season, a whole another season to figure out how to be national champions. Like, we can do it. 
it might be harder than the first time. It might be different. It might yeah. be this, that, or that. In 2019, like, you were close too, right? Yeah, we still. I mean, we still went to nationals. We still. You were in you the know, semifinals, and yeah, yeah. I mean, it yeah. was three, three we pairs lost, of two, right? Yeah, yeah, we lost to USC and yeah, knocked us out. But like, for me, it's always been opportunity, right? So in 2019, I filed for that me a medical redshirt, and that's how I got my sixth year. Right. Then COVID hit. And then I got another opportunity, right? Seventh year, COVID year, right? So it's it's always been about opportunity. And so when you if you don't look at it, look at it the correct way, or if you don't use it in the correct way, like you're not going to get anything good out of it. But if you really analyze what the opportunity is, and you you do what you can to make it the best of what you got, then you know, like that's I mean that's that's how I looked at it. And I think 2021 it. season was. Um, well, I thought beating Florida at the end was good. They seemed it was to good. be right. It was a two horse race in your conference, right? It's it's, yes. it's it's you or them. Am I correct? Yeah. I mean, who else yes. was even close? I think for me, um, just I, I mean, Hector could coach some people up. Oh TCU, yeah, 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 yeah. TCU is, is to be respected for so sure. Got to plug Hector. Sure. Mad love, Hector. But, yeah. No, they're, they're but it, but that season was a two horse race. Yeah. It. I think I'm still. In fact, didn't TCU make the they made the dance too, right? Yeah, they made the dance. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. I'm still just angry about a couple of things. I'm not going to go into detail because there's no need. I I don't think there's. I don't think that I need to say it, but there's just a couple of things that happened during the season that I feel like we could have done better as a team, maybe even as like a coaching staff. Like just like there's just little things that were different than the season before, and so it just. When things, when you have all of the same stuff and the results are different, you wonder, okay, where's the disconnect? What changed? Yeah, exactly. what changed? Yeah. And so there's just some things that changed, right? Clearly, the first thing I can really even think of is the lineup, right? Lineup changes. And so, you know, one change to your lineup makes you a different team. I, that's what I believe. And I think that one change or couple of changes that we did have, like maybe it wasn't as good as our lineup the year before. I don't know. I, I, I wasn't in the coaching shoes to say, right? Cause sometimes as a player, you get really caught up in what the coaches are doing sometimes. And for me, someone that wants to be a coach, I've always been the type to analyze why would they do this? From a coaching standpoint, not an athlete standpoint. Right. Right. So I just think um, like going based off that, there's just some things uh, that I like as a coach, like I'm like, would I have done that? Would I have not done that? Like there's just a couple of things in that realm that I think about sometimes. And then just overall, I think our team dynamic was just a little bit different than the year before. I don't think. Right. Hold, hold on a second. Yeah. Yeah. You right now, you're being respectful to a fault. OK, you right now, you're not criticizing anyone or trying to avoid criticizing anyone personally. Mm -hmm. This is a podcast that and you don't have to go this route. This is a podcast where yeah. you should be allowed to criticize volleyball people with volleyball. Mm -hmm. They have to have thick skin and take it just like you had to have thick skin and take everything you've taken your entire fucking life. So if you want to finish your diatribe the way you want to and not step on toes i get that but yeah i think you should allow yourself permission where you can talk volleyball about volleyball and at the same time not feel like you're shitting on someone yeah russell brock if he did if he did something different that you disagree with nobody's gonna have more or less respect for him the man's a savage and we and we love him but yeah so I'm just giving you permission. If you want to yeah. go the same route, and because you still got to play in the AVP and you still got people you got to answer to, right? And you don't want Casey Jennings coming on the beach saying, "I heard you talking about my wife." You know what I mean? Casey, I gotta, I gotta call Casey out because he did that to my boy Rob McLean. Because, and I'll tell you the story after that. But I want you to finish what you're saying. But I want you to allow yourself permission to not go too far, but go far enough where yeah. you're just criticizing volleyball people with volleyball. Yeah. To fuck up the, yeah. these sensitive ass cats, man. Come on, <laughs> stop. I had to stop you because I felt like I know, you're I trying to tell. get to a point and, you da and, you, and you, you're dancing like Gregory Hines here. I could tell you were wanting more, but. No, don't give me more if I don't, if I don't, if, you, if that's not I where you want to go, but. I, here's, here's what it is. It's just straight up. Like, 
I think about the season, but like I said earlier, nothing's going to change what happened. Right. Nothing, nothing that I think or say now is going to do anything. It's even anything. relevant. Got it. It's not even going to change. It's not so going to change point? it. Got you. You know what did come from that season, though? I felt that I was able to mentor some freshmen, right? I have a really really good friend now um ellie shank she's at lsu right now she's a sophomore she is one of the sweetest people i've ever met she was 18 years old when she got to college and i was 24 when we met and i believe coming out of that season she was one of my closest friends it's like 30 in college years right like it's just like <laughs> yeah literally grandma like over here need a walker like and she's just like, just trusted me and like, just allowed me to be that for her. And and I truly respect that because I think every person that goes through sports and athletics, like they always need that mentorship, right? You always want someone to look up to, you want someone to be able to talk to, you want someone to get advice from. And like, I feel like I got to do that with her. And I feel like she really grew as a person, as a player, as a freshman, just coming in. And I, I just, that was one of the biggest things that came from that season. Um, also, um, I'm now like closer than ever with Ashlyn Rasing Pope, my partner from LSU. Like we are best friends and I love that girl to death. She's is she, one of, is she out here now or she's, she's still LSU. She's a, she's a senior now. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, um, yeah, it was just, it's just awesome. Like, it, it was always kind of like, not like weird, but we weren't always the closest friends, like going through a partnership. And then like that last season, like we really got close and it just like, it just made everything click and work better. And now like, it's just so fun to have her still in my life and like still getting to call her and ask her about LSU. Like, yeah, like I, I don't really like, I don't have to hear about LSU stuff and I don't have to be a part of that, but like, it's cool to still be it's there. It's women's and, beach. There's always going to be a little of that. Yeah. Like and, I, and women's volleyball in general is going to be a little bit of that. Yeah. It's just nice to just still feel connected and like help her through tough times yeah. now. Like, cause you know, for example, like she's now in the role of the senior, the leader, the person that everyone looks up to. And sometimes that's not where you want to be. Well, right. Sometimes who, it's, who asked for that? Yeah, asked for that. yeah. Like, Did Savvy? <laughs> right. Did she? Did yeah. she ask for that? No. The only senior having to be the leader. Right? Yeah. Like, and mm. I think that I think personally that not everyone's born to be a leader. No. But I think you can learn how to, um, depending on the person. And, and you know, I've d I did my master's in leadership and human resources. So I know all about the leadership, the theories and this and that. And, you know, there's, there's not one way to be a leader. No, there's not one way. And so, you know, I, I think it's, it's something you can learn, but it's not for everyone. And so it's just been fun getting to kind of mentor her through that process, right? Being a leader, what, you know, like she might not necessarily want to be there, but I know that she, I know she wants it. And so like just kind of helping her guide her through that, it's been fun as well. And so, and then also like, you know, I, I mean, I've got, I've got so many teams at LSU. I, I, I've had so many teams, right? I've had five seasons indoor, three seasons beach. So I've had eight seasons of teams. Wow. Right. So I've had a plethora of people and teammates and coaches. And I mean, like I, I'm so grateful for the seven years I got in college because, you know, most people are like, oh my God, you stayed for seven years. How'd you do it? How'd you do it? How'd you do it? But like, it's like the time of my life, you just feel so like surrounded, like by such amazing people. And like my experience there was just like one I'll never forget. And I, I just, LSU is just a great place. And well, your ability your natural ability to, peach, to treat everybody the same way. Um, call it upbringing. Call it that's how you're built. Call it that's um, what you saw the people be and what you as and what you aspire to be because you saw a pattern of people like that or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's there, and people appreciate it and they see it. And frankly speaking, so do I. Like, um, again, I'm not a shrink, but I recognize the symptoms. Um, I'm very much like that. 
I mean, yeah. you'd be surprised. Like New Yorkers, they call New Yorkers rude, but you'd be surprised visiting the outer, outer boroughs, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, mm -hmm. um, not Staten Island. That's the worst place you're, you, I've ever been in my life. That's where people go to die. That's like Lubbock, Texas, okay? Um, but there's a virtue of just that person. That's a person. I'm a person, and you and you and you build off that humanity, and it makes people want to be around you. It makes people want to be around you, right? Yeah. I'm a returning, returning, returning adult student. I went back to school in Marymount, Manhattan, when I was 33 years old. Yeah. Did I feel like I was 15 years late for my prom? Yeah, maybe in the beginning. But I mean, at the end of the day, I'm trying to get a degree, and and I'm doing, I'm studying theater. It's something mm -hmm. I love. Very yeah. much like volleyball, where you have to prepare and you have to rehearse, and you have you have a director, and then when, yeah. and then when the show starts, the director can't even fucking touch you, you know. Yeah. So, so there's the very very much. Yeah. In fact, I put volleyball four years on the shelf for that. Yeah, that's. Incredible. I was I was setting for a nasty ass club team that won nationals twice, Bameso, all Dominican yeah. team, uh, for adult adult not not juniors because um, juniors people. I'm gonna tell you the truth. All right, nobody cares. Nobody cares. When you get to college and you get to the pros, oh, I play for this team or this club team. Oh, we won. We, you know, we won gold or whatever. Volleyball is very, theater and volleyball are the same. When you get to college, nobody cares what high school play you did. Nobody cares you did 40 seconds straight on high school. No, you care. And that's, that, that's an experience or whatever and this and that. And it shapes who you are. And you definitely form these bonds and these friendships. Mm -hmm. uh, year, you know, a decade later, you look at each other and you remember and you know, because it was the time of your life. Yeah. But for what you're trying to do, no, nobody cares. They, they only, I mean, as, as far as, you know, winning and losing, but yeah, I love sure. your virtue and, I, and and because I recognize it and I recognize it. Savvy is very, very much the same. You, yeah. you, um, you, you, you put on a hard face, but I think it just comes from gritting your teeth from having all this shit stuck in you. Okay. But, you know, you're, I agree. I agree. You're, but I think... you are, you're an amazing human being. And, I'm, Thank I'm, you. and I don't know if I'm, that's how I'm trying to end this podcast. We've been on, <laughs> I know we've been on this longer than you expected. No, but that's, just, mean, that's just how I roll. I love it. I, um, I love this. But I want to ask two more questions before we, get, um, before we break out of set at. Yeah. Um, beating Florida State at the end when it counted. How good did that feel? <sighs> you lost to them four times in the season, including, including twice, twice in the, uh, the conference playoffs. You know, I'm a little, I'm a little mad about that still because at conference, yeah, I was exposed to COVID and uh, was not allowed to play no. in, in the conference. Oh my God, no! I was not allowed to play in the conference tournament, and so that still sits with me very, like, like, oh. Because Meaning it was a contact trace, right? You didn't actually have COVID. Yeah, so my boyfriend had COVID, and I was in contact with him, and um, I was told if I tested negative five times before the tournament like five days in a row i could play yeah what's the problem <laughs> well the guidelines in louisiana were different than in in uh um where were they uh, honey alabama to, honey to, yeah 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 alabama right. the gu guidelines were different so i you do you know we consider those places the same out here right <laughs> yeah <laughs> Sorry, yeah that. so like <laughs> i didn't get to play in that conference tournament and and I'm not saying if I'd have played, we would have won. But, if, I mean, when I look back on the experience, I'm like, I feel like we, like, I feel like we could have won, right? Me and Ashton were doing really well at that point. We had really good connection going, and you know, Grace Seitz, who stepped in for me, amazing girl, amazing right. girl. She's a great friend of mine, like love her to death, kind of similar to the Ellie situation the year before when Grace came in as a freshman, kind of felt like I had some of that similar stuff going on. And she filled in for me for that tournament and she did fantastic. It just so happened that she, um, I was watching the live streams and I could tell something was off in the Florida State game and right. they were given a good fight. Like they were, they were doing really well and she did something to her knee. She's got some knee stuff going on, some knee pains. But stuff. you saw her walking noticeably. Yeah, I could tell something like conspicuously was off. Different. Yeah, yeah, something was off. She just wasn't like, like her. And come to find out, like her knee was really bothering her during the game because she did something in warm ups. And so, I mean, there's no excuses. And I, I, I mean, yes and no. But I feel like the results could have been different had. I got an opportunity to play or had she not had that little thing with her knee or, you know, there's a lot of things that could have been changed or happened, but right. overall so, still a little mad about it. But 
once we got the Nationals, beating them for the first time when it actually it was mattered. was kind of a confirmation bias. Oh, my gosh. It was the best feeling. Um, me and Ashlyn were actually so close to finishing our game like we were so close to being that 13 that won but they but it didn't even matter they rang the, but they rang the school yeah, bell they rang the school bell it didn't even matter we ran over to the ones court and we all just like just oh my god it was just such a celebration and just you know florida state's always been a good team they're they're still a good team now i mean i think they're ranked like third in the preseason polls and like i have mad respect for them they always have good athletes and and they do a really good job like they're i mean brooke she's amazing like i think she's a great coach and so mad respect for them but like she's just to, right, but go ahead. Just, <laughs> just to feel like the success like Regardless of if we had won or lost the national championship, we finally beat Florida State. So that was like such a great feeling, you know, something we were working towards in our season. So that was something that we did accomplish. And that's something to be like happy about, glad about. And, you know, I mean, it's a good feeling. So for people listening at home um, or wherever you are, <laughs> um, the way college beach volleyball works, it's basically five teams five doubles teams versus five doubles teams so you're basically winning something called a duel best three out of five teams and each team plays two out of three sets and for my volleyball people thank you for your patience like we know this jason shut the fuck up but um <laughs> so highlighting golf shores once yeah. one of the duels wins three matches once the three out of five happens the other teams that are playing <laughs> this is crazy just they just stop. stop they stop playing they don't finish the match it's, it's like so, uh. you're in the middle of this math test right and you get cornered right and it's like do you know the answer to not? did you do your homework or not and it's like the bell rings it's like gotta, gotta go, go. <laughs> That's a great analogy. Uh, it is. That was the best it analogy. It is the perfect analogy. It is <laughs> mad appropriate for, for what the fuck we're talking about right here. I'm trying not to say the F word because I want my kids to share this podcast. Yeah, I yeah, want yeah. everyone to share this podcast because I'm having some problems with Facebook. They will. They, they won't will. allow me to run ads. They won't allow me to run notifications. So, um, And I do have a, a large bunch of people who actually who actively look for new episodes for which sure. is rare right yeah, well, look i'm not kim kardashian where um, I, all of my videos are just coming out to people who are not subscribed to me they're just they just right i got new bud implants someone who, do, who doesn't know or care just get the videos there and, and i'm like notification oh, yeah all right no but the video's there and i'm like yeah. I, you know you initially don't care about her or kanye <laughs> or, or bruce or caitlin but yeah. it's there you're like you're curious so yeah. so they got that luxury and right now um I'm al algorithmically blocked from that luxury, at least for now. I'll figure that shit out later. Yeah, but I'm trying not to curse because I want I want my kids to share this too. Mm -hmm. I definitely want the parents to share this because that's a great story. Oh yeah, that's they a will. great story. Um, last question: Do you notice that certain players have superpowers? And I asked I asked Savvy similar this question too. Certain players have su superpowers playing at different venues. For an example, you can play. Let's just say sponsored on clays at the time where you can play Kolinsky and Stockman in Manhattan Beach. And it seems like they're, they're more likely to win that game. But you can pl also play them in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And now you're in the third set. And the third set is really the whoever's the hottest. It's not even a better team. Because yeah. the third set already shows you're, e you're equally, you're equal enough yeah, where, yeah, where yeah. anyone can win that. Mm -hmm. Do you notice certain teams have superpowers in certain venues and where's your superpower? I do believe that. I do think that that is true. I mean, home, it's, home court advantage has always been a thing. It's correlatively you know? true. Correlatively yeah. is not even a fucking word. For but you sure. know what I'm talking about. I'm just <laughs> um, I know for kind of going back to the college, um, kind of college talk, like uh, at LSU, like we had played some of our best volleyball at our home court. I mean, it's the i'm gonna say it it's the best venue in the country if somebody has a problem with that you can go kick rocks you can contact me come see me yeah whatever, <laughs> whatever you want that's fine yeah, don't mess um, this girl's built to beat you everything <laughs> there's there there are no weaknesses anymore she got rebuilt to beat you um, go ahead little bionic woman yeah so like at lsu our courts um we have super deep sand and um it's a it's a, it's a different type of deep sand yeah. right you have your freaking hermosa manhattan sand which is deep and it's the type of sand that you kind of sink into 
right? California right. sand you kind of sink into. Our sand's like big craters, oh. right? It's like like just like big holes. Like yeah. it's just so deep and like you're you don't like, necessarily sink like, into it. Why is the it? middle of the net higher yeah, than the yeah. sides? <laughs> yeah, basically. And so I also like think back to when we played UCLA at home, right? That was magical. That was probably one of the best moments of my college career. You're in my house now. Yeah. Like that was unreal. Our fan base, our supporters, like we had over 2,000 people in our facility. That's packed. That's the most right. we've ever had. Right. Right. That That is, we have never felt that type of atmosphere. But to feel that and then beat UCLA. It's electric. Like electric. Like that was like Corey and Weber beating Rafu and um yeah and uh, Marciniak and Kenner, Coconut yep. Beach. Yep, I ha I call that match. Electric. I'm gonna get permission. I actually I, I video captured that match because that that yeah. was that was my rock star moment. I called center court. Hey. Um, and I want I want that on my YouTube handle. One hundred percent. They, yeah. I mean, I do believe pl players have those superpowers. I think. Um, there's too much correlation that that yeah, to suggest it. Yeah, like Hawaii. We just talked about Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Look at their look at their win loss. Forget their beach team. Look at all of their teams. Look mm -hmm. at their women's team. Look at their indoor men's team. Mm -hmm. I think they're probably in the number one seed, if not number two or three. That's crazy. One hundred percent. I love, but I love when people are like, oh wow. So you think just playing in this certain place made you beat that team? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes. On a large scale, there's just there's way too much evidence. On a small scale, yeah. you just you just gave. Uh, you can go to your high school games, home games. You uh, LSU beating UCLA. That's a large scale game. On um, yeah. New York, there's a place in Harlem called Riverbank State Park. Free volleyball Monday and Wednesday. Yeah. All all Dominican. No one on no one in that damn gym speaks English. Yeah. So, so there's a bunch of courts. It's high level this and that. So but it's all fours. Mm -hmm. So I call I just call it Dominican fours. But I can play four short dudes. Yeah. And I and I and I could play them three times or maybe four times a whole night and I'll lose all four times. But anywhere else they'll play me, I can beat that team. And it's so weird because it's like, wow, Jason won. He, what? He he won regionals? He won a bid? This is not the guy that got smoked on 145th by them short dudes? You know, and I'm like, both are true. Both are true. What, what do you guys say about that? Yes, I'm that guy that lost to them. them. Yeah. I can't say. I got to It's not even legal to say midgets anymore. Them little oh, tiny people. Little tiny people. I'm just jealous because these guys, skill set wise, what it took me years to consciously learn how to do serve receive how do i get out of my head and just pass this ball these guys those are things where it looks like they're not even worried about yeah i'm worried about giving a good set because i became a, a setter yeah. i was my first four years five years outside hitter and then straight to setter Heck yes. um yes. but i'm like is this four gonna look good or is my first hit gonna look good these are things where i'm like these dudes are not even like on my level and they're doing it. And they don't even, and I'm like, you mother. They don't even care. Doing no, it. I I hate you. I hate you and, and the little short dude next to Basically, you. Basically, yes. Yes. And they're like, I hate you too, you tall bastard. I hope Ben, <laughs> hope ben Laden flies a plane into your lip. <laughs> uh -oh. So, but that was the last question I wanted to ask. And um, you got any questions you want to ask me? Anything you, you want to know about me? I don't think <laughs> nobody, nobody cares about me. But, hey. if, you're, but if you're curious about it, um, um, if you're curious about it, then now's the time to ask. Sure, I'll I'll take over your role. Um, Jason, give us a little uh, background into um, what all you're doing now in the volleyball world. Well, recently I got sucked back into coaching uh, juniors. Yes. When, I, when I promised, when I, sw I gave my word to God that I wouldn't. Um, had a falling out at Endless Summer, Deron Forbes. Personally, we're still friends. Business, I'm going to just say what it is. That I, didn't, I didn't like the way that was handled. We could have handled, both of us could have handled that better, but I'm For always sure. going to say on her part more than mine. And J.O., Jason Olive, former All-American, um, Ralph, supermodel, like Ralph Lauren Versace, won the yeah. first likeness, likeness lawsuit against Hawaii because okay. they said he couldn't model and do that, but he, yeah. he took him to court and, and, and put, it in, put, it, put it on him. Yeah. Um, he came up. I'm, I got an indoor team. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't want to do it. Dane Blanton is like, dude, I'm doing LA Beach with Jason Olive or whatever. And I'm like, Jason, I love it. And I'm, I mean, Dane, I'm, I'm cool. And 
there's no one I respect more than you on, I mean, on, on so many levels as yeah. a player and a coach, like he's the only player right now to have an Olympic gold medal, um, an AVP crown and an NCAA championship as a player and a coach. No other male player holds that distinction, not even Karch Karai. So telling him no, and I'm like, I feel weird for saying this because this is like turning down sex from like <laughs> Halle Berry in her prime. It's like I can't believe I'm saying no, oh but I God. but I have a girlfriend, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, right? You when know, normally you'd be like, ain't nobody watching. <laughs> ain't nobody. So um, um, they both came together, and I said yes because I was the only. I mean, cool. that was too much. There was too much star power to say no. So I'm yeah. doing that. I was just happy with the podcast. The podcast is taking off. Yeah, your podcast um, is doing I was traveling, amazing. doing color commentary because that was one of the things I wanted to do when I moved here. I moved here five years ago and it took, it took a long time to get that break. Yeah. Casey Jennings, who my, my re one of my close friends and resident nutball, saw me on, uh, talking on a YouTube video. I was like, yeah. I like that guy. So he took me to Vegas, uh, FIVB. Yeah. I auditioned Court 5 as an audition and they liked cool. me. So I started calling all the Pepperdine's home games. The Big West Championship when Hawaii played Cal Poly, I call court four. Sweet. And Travis is there with me, Travis, uh, my yeah. Dodd. It was Dodd, Hovland, yeah. Rob Espero, yeah. Filipino Savage. Um, so that's what I've been up to lately. It's the podcast. Um, I still coach privately, like Jeff Samuels awesome. when he's in town, I coach him. Yes, uh, Chris Jeff's Austin, awesome. Chris Austin. I mean, I, I, my, my thing is I coach strong personalities. Personalities yes. which can be toxic and personalities which are just strong. Like Jeff is not a toxic player. Jeff Jeff likes to do things his way that by the way works. <laughs> so yeah, right? Yeah. You, but I'm right, you think I'm gonna teach Jeff how to jump? No, I'm, but I can <laughs> I can say you're a pain in the ass. We need yeah. to start this way. You yeah. Know? So um so I'm coaching privately, coaching club. Cool. And I have a five year old. I like spending time with her sometimes she's adorable um, by the way she's, everyone she's the most she's uh oh i promised to tell a denari story too uh, but go ahead but um yeah but that's what i've been up to sweet that's what i've been up to that's i awesome. moved here five years ago um the club was really good in the summer mm -hmm. we led the nation in recruitments per capita 2018. cheers to you i coach indoor boys at evolution that was a new program back then 16s cool. we were ranked 50th in california but when we got to nationals we were fifth in the country wow. so a lot of work yeah lmu the year before they were six and 13 when i left them they were 22 and 14. um so Lots of everywhere i go my fingerprints i think on any coach any co look any coach should say that the player coming uh, uh, um, is better coming out than when they were coming in. Any decent coach would say that, but then there are yep. levels where they're this much better, where they're that much better. Yeah. Are you an average mechanic in a room full of Ferraris, or are you a great mechanic turning four Pintos into Tauruses? Yeah. What's your pleasure? So that's sure. that's been my that's been me the last five years. For sure. Before that, that's 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 a whole nother episode where if you ever do a podcast, you can interview me because the yeah. my you think your journey is difficult. Try oh. try lacing my boots. D Division three, yeah. um, playing pro in Germany. Division one, um, pris uh, doing prison ministries. You know, uh, for talking to Jesus to people yeah. on Rikers Island, military service. I'm a Gulf War vet. So there's just so much that yeah, you, Wendy. You got me, a lot going Yeah, me on. and Wendy. But I, was, I just do the last five years. And, and that's but that's what I've been up to. And I'm really, really, yeah. I'm in a really, really good place right now. Um, it's amazing. Um, on the surface. Yeah. There's some things psychologically. I, it's not, a, not everybody's business I'm going to talk about later. Um, yeah. How's that? Good. Good job. Yeah, yeah, Look yeah, at but, me stepping in, being no. you. Well, it's a podcast. I know. I like, love it. Like some people consider it an interview, but a, uh, the reason why I have a podcast is, is because it's open dialogue. You need a venue that's unfiltered. There's yeah. already enough regulation, where where people are allowed to say things and not say things. And I think, if people can take it, yeah, um, that allow people to get permission to, to think out loud to make mistakes. Yeah, for to, sure. to say the wrong things and correct themselves. Mm -hmm. We can get somewhere as a collective whole. This podcast had a mission that I didn't find out until episode 25, but, but, um, yeah, you know, because it was just a volleyball podcast it with my friends time. talking shit. But, yeah. but now, um, no, it takes time but to now, develop. Yeah. Provoke, look, ask the question. Mm -hmm. Ask the question again. Provoke thought. And even if you don't have an answer, asking the questions enough because it at least makes people think. That's the podcast. Do, yeah. do sports, entertainment, current events and health and wellness.
Thank God for Wendy Jones with the health and wellness. Heck yes. Isn't what she a the woman. nicest human being in the world? What a woman. I'm actually cool. taking her. She just had her ankle surgery. Yeah. I'm taking her to go see her son. Oh, you're going to be the nurse? Uh, yeah. I'm, well, I'm taking her to go see her son play at Long Beach on Friday. Yes. People, listen. This episode comes out tomorrow, which is Friday, but it's going to come out early enough. Long Beach State plays um, Stanford. Uh, Stanford, and her son, Luke Turner, was the starting opera, but I think he's hitting outside now. Is he still opposite? I'm not I sure. wonder. Yeah. They're I doing wonder. a lot of mix and match and i did see him yeah. play before and he looks good i'm kid excited good, yeah we're gonna i'm gonna take her down there she got her ankle ashley's ankle coming done. too ashley clark is going yep. to yep maybe take my wife take, i'm like take okay. my wife yeah, please I'll take please, your wife. please take my wife she, i'm taking your wife because she i uh <laughs> wendy uh well i was supposed to go to the game but my practice got moved from saturday to friday because i have a, jun oh. a juniors tournament this sunday so yeah so i gotta it, do what i gotta do beach or indoor uh, indoor indoor, indoor. Cool. Yeah, la volleyball cool. club i coach oh, yeah, 13 yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, we awesome. have two. We have a flow one team, which is like top five in the country, and we have a flow two team that's developmental. But but now everybody thinks they're good too because we, I don't know, we just got good. So we they're gonna hit a brick wall eventually. Yeah, yeah. When you hit the top ten or whatever, but they're they're we're undefeated in every tournament except the PVL qualifier. Sweet. Where we just we just missed the cut, but yeah. I I was just trying to talk long enough because we're almost at two hours. <laughs> <laughs> If you look at the ticker, look at the clock down there. Oh, we're, we're so close. And we're right there. <laughs> that's a wrap. That is a wrap. <laughs> Let's, before we go, is there, um, um, people want to know more about you. Oh my God, that girl's so good. In fact, she is so fun. How could I be down? What's her IG handle? <laughs> Does she have a website? I just want to follow her everywhere she goes. She got new bionic arms and legs. <laughs> she got that natural face. She got the swishy hair. <laughs> Where are you? Tag, tag um, yourself. So I'm on Instagram. Um, it's at Big Toe. Um, and the toe is spelled T-A-U-X. And that's just... Um, that's just a... a Louisiana a thing. LS, right? LSU thing. We uh, spell our go G-E-A-U-X. And so I've just been like, you know, sticking with it. You know, that's home. Um, just trying to brand myself. But yeah, that's my nickname, Big Toe. I got that when I was at LSU. It first was Massive Toenails, but we changed it. Thank God. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Big Toe on Instagram. You could follow me on Facebook. I do all my uh, games live stream there. Um, Tony T. Rodriguez. Um, I'm not going to spell it out because I think you guys can find me. But I also do Still a little. Uh, a Q, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a G just so y'all know. Um, also, I do have a little business going right now. It's called Level Up Volleyball. It's a virtual recruiting platform um, for my junior um, girls that are trying to play in college. So if you are interested, um, my website is www.levelupvolleyball.com. And uh, I have TikTok. I'm not the biggest, you know, I don't make a lot of videos, but I might start if you guys are going to follow me. It's uh, Toe, T-O-E-E-E-E-E, Knee, K-N-E-E-E-E. So if you analyze my name, it's just a toe and a knee, okay? Two body parts. Don't forget that. Oh, my God. Hold on. I got to record this part. She got three toes on her knee, and they call her Tony, Tony, Tony. <laughs> Tony, Tony, Tony. <laughs> there we go. I can stop. Oh, I didn't even press record on that. You an idiot. I'm not, should I do it again? Tony, Tony, Tony. Tony, Tony, Tony. That's it. All right. Bye. <laughs> um, all right. So, guys, Tony might love you, but I don't love you. In fact, I'm out of here, all right? In fact, I'm fed up with all of y'all. I'm done with you. So for all of you at home, for all of you on your iPad, for all of you on your Droid or iPhone on a Starbucks line <laughs> listening to this, for all of you on your desktop, who runs the world? Old school. Old school. For my girl, Tony Rodriguez, I am Jason DeBellis, and I'm going to hit my music. Stay with me at the end, and we're out. Come check out the Option Podcast on OptionDB.com. It's also available on iTunes and Spotify and on YouTube under the NY Varsity Sports Handle. You're going to love what you hear.